Welcome to the Indigo Playroom and another exciting night of wonder. I am the scribe, I am the DM for this ragtag bunch of heroes and anti-heroes and hats. And uh, welcome to Wonderland. Uh, this is a 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons game set in the wonderful world of Wonderland. Alice and Alice's Wonderland. Uh, but we've changed some things, it's years and years after the events of those stories took place. Uh, before we jump into tonight's game and jump right into uh, a few announcements. Uh, this is Tuesday, I lose track of days. Uh, Thursday is the next thing happening on this channel and it is Creative Chaos. Uh, we're gonna be doing some arts and crafts and uh, I believe Gypsy and, yes, Gypsy and Indigo are gonna be doing some arts and crafts and I will be cheering from afar, having drinks. <laughs> I'm living we in the stairs, make, making no noise. Uh, like, yeah. I'll be in my room. I will be in my room, making no noise. Uh, no, pretending but, I don't exist. exist. Pretending, there we go. Uh, and, and cheering Pirates. madly, wildly, as I have no sort of crafty bones in my body. But uh, but please tune in. It'll be fun to watch the two of them have fun and me to, to make comments off to the side. Um, so uh, that is Thursday. Friday is our uh, holidays special. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, hosted by our one big Uno and uh, your good buddy Scribe. Uh, we're going to drink and play games and hang out and meet people. And you're going to learn of throughout the course of the evening the two or three brand new projects coming to Indigo Chameleon as we reveal those. Uh, we originally had this set up so that we would have guest stars show up. Anybody that's able to make appearances that night is more than welcome to come by and have uh, the multitude of drinks that are being made. There's gonna be a lot. Um, uh, but uh, we did this because a few weeks ago we hit 100 followers and we're like, we should celebrate. Cool. Uh, and then we did. And then it turns out that this is a celebration of us hitting uh, 300 followers. Thanks to all of you fine people out there in the um, universe that are following and telling your friends and subscribing and, and, and all of that stuff, subscribing. So thank you so much uh, for all that you're doing. Uh, we're going to hit 300 and there's ain't no stopping us now. Uh, and then that'll cycle us back around to Sunday night, game nights, and then follow to Tuesday. Uh, we cycle back to Wonder. Um, 22nd. The 22nd Friday. is a special charity stream that we are doing here on the channel. Uh, I will be running a group of heroes uh, as we raise money for a very, very good project. Uh, the Trevor Project is a charity that does um, suicide prevention and, and services for LGBT teens and youth. Um, it is something that we are very proud to be representing. And the Trevor Project reached out to me, reached out to me today, and I was floored uh, to say thank you. Uh, so uh, the 22nd, we are doing that, uh, and I'm going to be leading a group through my one of my favorite <laughs> modules, written by Mr. Gary Gygax himself, called the Tomb of Horrors. Where I'm, I'm contemplating having you guys create two characters. <laughs> oh, so good. You let me know ahead of time, just so oh, I'm emotional. Like, I'm prepared oh, yeah. not to get emotional. So attached. we got that going. It's gonna be great. <laughs> come on in, come on in. You wanna say hi to everybody? Uh, Hillary was one of our D and D one hundred and one students. She was yeah. Yeah. And she's gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> So we got that. Uh, oh my God. Uh, uh, but, but remember, all of the money raised uh, goes to supporting the Trevor Project. So uh, please tune in. Uh, we'll have some fun surprises uh, tonight. Uh, tonight, thanks to our amazing sponsor, Critical Dice, uh, which sponsors Wonder. We have a dice giveaway for all you wonderful people. This beautiful set of green dice. I don't know. Hopefully, you guys can see it. Uh, we are giving that away tonight. Uh, it is very easy to win this set of dice. Uh, all you will do, you need to live in the continental United States. Uh, you're going to be typing one word into the chat. 
uh, and then stick around to the end of the stream uh, and we will choose a winner. And that word that you're going to type in, you're only going to type it one time. Yes, is... if you type it more than once, it, it disqualifies you. So don't type it more than once, please. The word you're going to type in is cloak. C-L-O-K. No. <laughs> C-L-O-A-K. C-L-O-A-K. <laughs> yeah, I was like, you're I'm really tired. C-L-O-A-K. Man rushing here to do that. We don't spell. We just have here. I'm just supposed to be pretty. Uh, C-L-O-A-K. Yeah, one, close. Uh, it's like that. Uh, one time. Uh, and uh, one time only. And that will uh, make it so that you are available for the giveaway. So. I think that's all the announcements, uh, but if you want to, to, to be the first ones to know anything, honestly, uh, hang out with us on Discord. Uh, it's where we make all of our major announcements. We have a Vampire RP on the Discord. We've got all sorts of fun stuff on there, so please uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, when last we left our heroes in the previous episode, um, a lot of stuff happened. Uh, we learned a lot about our good buddy Nyx, unfortunately, as all hell sort of broke loose uh, at the household. and. Uh, Bandy was sort of taken. Uh, we got to meet a sort of devilish bounty hunter of uh, sorts that was here to to take Nyx back. Uh, and you all fought them off bravely. Uh, the party was a little duped, uh, a little sort of taken aback, and uh, a little bit. Uh, so uh, we are actually going to pick up this episode uh, the next morning after the events of the previous episode. Before we had skipped a week, but. Uh, no, we're picking up the next morning, uh, as you all sort of come down from breakfast at your various times uh, throughout the day, um, and everyone is, has taken a long rest. If you haven't done so already, do that now to regain hit points and spells. You're going to need it. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> does the house look disheveled after thanks, Ice Knife? Or does it? Or no, you had the. Uh, I I didn't knife. use an ice knife. That was this guy over here. I used thunder wave. That one. Strong. That one. That's, so does the house look like, different? <laughs> does it look like who's a the, house? Who's the first one up? Did we say that again? You don't have a man in your room. <laughs> uh, I am stretching. I am excited. Uh, you you all find out at various uh, times when you come down the stairs mm. that the room has been reset. Okay. To it, to the proper place. All yeah, furniture, the movies, uh, all the furniture that was destroyed and, and things of that sort uh, look like they're coming into place. And uh, if any of you were up particularly early, we've never talked about your character's sleeping habits. Uh, some of you may have actually seen the furniture slowly mending itself uh, back together. Our house is magic. Don't need a mate. <laughs> um, as that happens, uh, you all are uh, waking up at various times, some of you in the same room, uh, some of you reading books, uh, when there is a knock that reverberates all throughout the entire house. Um, and it's coming from downstairs. <laughs> well, this went so well last time. <laughs> uh, that knock came from the front door. This is a little bit lower. Ooh. Oh, deja okay. vu. Like, like, basement level? Downstairs. I'm going downstairs. Okay, I, yeah, I follow. Yep. Go get some coffee. Um. <laughs> uh, You're in the kitchen alone yeah. again? Yeah. For those of you that head downstairs, uh, you see a familiar face greeting you at the door. For some of you, a little bit more familiar than others. Uh, for you, those of you that may open it. And it's like, uh, and it is, uh, Jamie, who's just sort of like uh, James, sort of looks at all of you and says, Hi, where have you been? I haven't seen you all around the club for quite some time. So you got some fancy new digs, too. Hi. Hi. Jamie. Uh, yeah, not again. <laughs> As if all we're greeting each other now. It's so, it's so emotional. Well, Hang on, let's try it again. Let's try it again. <laughs> you, you say Jamie, and then I'll, I'll say it to you. Jamie. My, oh, I can't do it. <laughs> I tried. You're just a little too emotional for me. Uh, so, I was actually here. I'm, I'm sorry to bodge in without colon or nothing, but you, you haven't really used the cups enough in the past week for me to sort of make a formal request. Um, I, I was hoping y'all wouldn't mind doing a little job for me. That same deal as last time? You get access to the lost and found? and uh, it, it, It's honestly a real quick, easy run to the city pop back, n nothing wrong, nothing bad, just you're going to go there, you're going to meet a fella, he's going to give you a package, and then you'll, 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 you'll come right back. 
Why do I, why am I feeling that going to get a package and going right back is not as easy as you may well, it's, it's a little more complicated, but it just, it, but, but, look, you're all, you're all, you look stronger, you look handsomer, uh, yeah, you got fancy new digs now, <laughs> everything looks very nice, uh, but you can always use a little something extra, right? A little something to line your pockets. He's got me so. I'll, I'll even up at this, dude. Right? You don't even have to go digging through the lost and found. I, I'll pay you straight up gold. Never said no to gold before. Never will. <laughs> um, and there is something a little extra about it, but I kind of need you to agree to the job before I let you in on it. Well, it doesn't involve, like, killing somebody or hurting somebody um, or anything, does it? No! No, 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 no. I would like no. to insight this. Uh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I get an insight since I asked the question. Would you like to take an insight? <laughs> Oh, that's a three plus three. Yeah, so nine. Nice. <laughs> he is he is so truthful with you guys right now. He's like the most truthy truth order that ever true. Cool. <laughs> truth so as long as we don't gotta kill anybody. Well, maybe you may not have to. Right, right, right. Uh, so that's we're all in agreement. Yeah, everyone's good. Yes. Um, sure. The Cheshire popped up. Cheshire. Cheshire popped up on the radar. Uh, we're, we're, we're getting hints of uh, um, something in a room. Oh, hell, you already been there. Uh, he popped up in the war room. Big, big, big magical signature. Uh, right right there in the, right there at the mouth. Um, and for those of you who know, the mouth is this sort of, uh, as you get closer to the castle, like the city gets a little bit bigger and bigger. Uh, right before you get to the castle, there's this large sort of wall surrounding the area mm -hmm. but the city right before it is called the mouth as in the mouth leading into the belly of the beast which is the castle so the mouth is the city almost right there at the castle gates um but uh we're, we're, we're hearing uh, reports of magical items and just big signatures and stuff and uh and, and obviously i i can't talk because there's uh, uh reasons but but i figured y'all you, you could all go and you could Scope out the territory, and if you find them, you find them. If you don't find them, then, then nothing's wrong. I, I have a contact on the inside. Who's your contact? It's a friend of mine. You're going to love him. Who's your contact? It, it's, a, it, it's nobody you ever met before. He's from south, north, way up north. He's not from around here. So do we know what he'll look like, or does he just know what? Oh yeah, you're you're gonna definitely know what he looks like. He, he's actually uh, I gave him a description all of you. He's gonna walk right up to you. You'll know. So is this more of like a snatch and grab kind of job, or is it more of like a, you know, hey, here you go, bye, have you seen it? I've done a little bit of legwork for you. Uh, you're gonna be, you're gonna get a chance into the city, which is huge. Uh, because they don't just let anyone walk in there. And you were a bit of a negative too, because you're walking around with that bloody hat. But um, here's here's the deal, and uh, here's how we've managed to get you in. Um, it's not alone. Uh, that's how we knew Cheshire was out and about. Um, we're getting reports of several of them. Several of hats. Hatters. Similar to that. Ones that you throw and they come back and they're, and there's all sorts of stuff and uh, people are claiming their prizes in the game. The game? Yeah. That's all we're hearing. There's some game that's hard to get into, uh, but the prizes are just out of this world. People, people claim that they get their heart's desire in the game. Uh, uh, loved ones that they haven't seen for years, like... They get the chance to see them, or, or weapons. Uh, uh, one fella had these things where he attached to his leg and allowed him to like, climb up walls and some kind of spells and, 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 and all such nonsense. Uh, hats, you know, uh, that, that are claimed to be belonging to the original hatter himself. There's a chance to see loved ones. Yeah, that's what I said. We've already agreed. No. That's right, you did already agree. <laughs> so so here we go. <laughs> and he turns a little dial. He goes to the door and he turns the dial on the door and he looks at all of you and he turns the dial. And uh, as he does, he sort of opens the door and it opens into a back alleyway. Um, uh, uh, here's what you're going to do. You're going to want to head straight forward across this alleyway. Uh, you'll see um, you'll see this tavern uh, set up. Um, and it's... Uh, you know, it's called uh, the Tipsy Toadstool. <laughs> You'll walk into the Tipsy Toadstool, and, and that's where my uh, uh, my contact will have you. Supposedly, uh, knows the city like the back of his uh, back of his 
He's got a hand. Yeah, he's got a hand. Uh, back of his hand. Hmm. Well, I'm satisfied with my line of questioning, and I'll start heading towards the portal. Uh, okay. Good luck! Uh, and, and he uh, he closes the door uh, behind, and as he does, uh, the door um, sort of closes, but as it does, uh, uh, you hear his voice sort of ring out. It's like, when you're ready to go home, just click the teacup. <laughs> and the door closes. Okay. Welcome to the mouth. Uh, one of the larger cities in Wonder. Like I said, it is leading up into sort of the large uh, castle structure. As you go out, uh, everybody make perception checks as you sort of survey your surroundings. <laughs> uh, who got above a 15? Wait, what, what were we on? Perception checks. <laughs> no? No, no. <laughs> Man, this place is great. Uh, I got above <laughs> a 10. Okay. Uh, so you all notice, and for those of you who have not been in cities before, uh, the first thing you notice is that the menagerie of the sort of individuals and races that you find are far-reaching. Races that you've never, uh, you've seen before, some of you that are a little more learned and things like that, but everyone seems to be walking and going at a fast clip. Um, off to your side, you see a, like a thriving sort of marketplace, but it's almost like a bazaar. As people scream out things, they're holding up magical items and people are haggling back and forth. Uh, and things of that sort. Um, you're noticing a heavy guard presence, but that's just near, sort of, the closer you get to the wall directly across from you. Um, but for right now, it's people sort of bustling about. It's the most individuals and beings that you've seen in any given place, with probably with the exception of a party that you guys went to. Um, she's going to want to stealth. So, like, if they're moving forward, she'll want to stealth with them. Okay. Uh, directly across the way, uh, you guys see that there is a sign, the tipsy toadstool, and uh, even the the sign occasionally does this thing where it, like, it swings in the wind, and then it falls off completely and hits the ground, and the minute it hits the ground, it comes back up to the post, and like swings like this, and then falls, tips over, and then comes back up. It seems to be some sort of enchantment attached to the sign. That sign is awful lot like me on a Friday night. <laughs> Guys just didn't want to come here to drink, did you? <laughs> no, of course I mean, not. We have you things to do. Find this contact at the bottom of some glasses of nice ale or mead, right? Okay. I guess we'll go in. Splendid. I mean, we're going to go in anyway, so we can argue about it and then go in, or we can just go in. Oh, it's all semantics anyways, right? Let's go in. <laughs> uh, you walk... That's not how that word should be used. <laughs> <laughs> you walk into the tipsy told stool. It's morning, so the place isn't uh, jumping like you would might see in the evening. There is, however, one individual in this bar. He's got a dark blue, purplish skin. Uh, he's playing an instrument, and uh, that individual uh, sort of stops what he's doing and uh, comes over and speaks to all of you. <gasps> She recognizes him? I don't think so. He's from out of town. There you go. I was too. <laughs> so, um, she's, uh, she's just gonna, she just start crying. If that's what I think it is. Uh, uh, it's not who you think it is. Uh, he's got okay. dark blue, purple skin, and things of that sort. So it's not someone that you you. Recognize. It's not okay. who you think it is. Cool. Um, but good. this <laughs> but this individual is playing an instrument in the corner, and, and some of the drunker uh, uh, people who are there early in the morning will occasionally come over and 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 drop coin in the hat, and he'll lower the volume of his playing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, but this individual greets all of you and says. It's about time you got here. <laughs> and you've been expecting us long. Yeah, long enough. Like, okay. <clears throat> have we have we noticed these like these more sour type people coming in, just putting one in his case, and like, hey, bring it down, bring it down, bring it down. Uh, yeah, you'll notice that there are uh, there, there are several people around the room that seem to be nursing hangovers, Sweet. and occasionally they drop coin in there. Perfect. Um, I'm gonna put five gold in your case. Play on, my friend. The merriest tune you know. <laughs> <laughs> Can uh, she wish. join in the business? <laughs> uh, give me a performance check as you, uh, as this gentleman sort of uh, places gold in your case, and you start uh, playing music. He takes out this, uh, this. It's like nine. 
That's good. <laughs> um, it's music. <laughs> music. Uh, like it's it's good. Uh, but uh, here's the deal: you don't know if he's doing it to spite him or if he thinks it's good. Uh, he's sort of keeping you on your toes a little bit. I just really want to annoy the people in the room that are like, there's that hang on. Hey, mission accomplished. <laughs> you, sir, are fantastic. Here's a couple more pieces of gold. I'll drop two more gold into his little pocket. Thank you, thank you. So, why are we here? We didn't come to listen to music. Didn't you? Didn't we? No. Uh, so you were told to, you were told to just meet them and that uh, to escort them about the city. You have a debt that a bar tab, an extensive bar tab that you are trying to work off, <laughs> and that that all you had to do was to sort of follow around with them and and escort them about the city. So, um, super sorry about this. It's been. A hell of a night for us all. Uh, You're telling me. <laughs> oh. I like him. <laughs> TV speak. What was your name again? My name's Asia. A- Asia. Asia. Day, pleasure to meet you. And you, dear. On the way, I just want to like greet myself, but in Infernal, just to kind of see if he, with a name like Asia, just to kind of see. Mm. You have something in your throat, sir. <laughs> Hi, Grim, nice to meet you. Uh, pleasant trees are exchanged around the table. Uh, uh, you are brought food and drink. Um, you have access to the entire city. You know that somewhere amidst the city there is a game being played. Um, the trick is going to be to find it. Oh. So is this more of a by invitation only sort of game? Or is there like some seedy sort of people that actually know about it? Underneath the radar of the guard. I was on the to follow you. I assumed you knew. So then what use are you? You just know the city? What use are you? <laughs> well, um, uh, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I'm... Can I slide half my gold back? <laughs> <laughs> uh, funny enough, you go to slide your gold back and that gold is gone. You've won the day, sir. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so should we just go? But where are we off to? We don't really have a... Well, I mean, I guess we just need to wander aimlessly around the city until we run into a game, huh? Well, there could be hundreds of games being played now. I don't know. We could wander with purpose and hope we run into the game. Or we wander without purpose and hope we run into the game. Sounds yeah. like we're doing a lot of wandering around. I wonder. Do we know anything about this game? It's we know being played. Uh, <sighs> give me a history check. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, you know very little about it, other than that occasionally people will go into a bar and start spouting off these wild stories about how they played the game. They, they are expressly told not to say what the game was about or what it's done. You've been looking for it because money, treasure, like all of your wildest dreams like coming true a, a part of this game. The only thing that you know to go off of is... You have to catch the white hair, Hmm. and that's your entry fee into the game. So rabbits are being sold at premiums here in the city for the 15 gold, 30 (laughs) gold, like... Is this something she she would know of, being... Um, I would say that, uh, give me a history check. It's going to be a little bit of a higher DC, as the game is probably being whispered about during your time here. Ironic. Mm, you said history. Yes. Fifteen. Um, you you've heard of it. You knew you knew a little bit about it. Um, people were claiming that they played the game, and you know, uh, or they met someone who did. You didn't meet. Hmm. You didn't. You never met anybody that played it. It was always a friend of a friend, my friend's cousin, a family member played, and then came back. Um, so do you know anybody that's in this bar that has played this game? No one here. Hmm. Do you know where we could find someone? Not someone, but where it is, you catch the white hair. And anyone who's come in bragging about having caught a white hair? A few. 
All right, do you know if it's literally a white hair or if it's like a figurative white hair? Like, do we need to find a building that has a white hair or, or is this like a white hair? We need more information. Psst. Yes. Psst. Uh, the bartender is, is over there and just sort of like looks over at the group and like motions for someone to come over. I'm walking over. I'm over. I'm saying. <laughs> you're saying. <laughs> so you're looking for the white hair? That's in fact what we're looking after, looking for. To get into the game, yeah? He is. He reaches, he reaches under the bar and sort of looks around and as he does, he, uh, he pulls out a bottle, and it's this bright white bottle. Oh, it takes Lord. <laughs> I'm in it. Four, five, six. Lines up six, off, bro. six <laughs> shot glasses. Mm-hmm. He says, who all wants to go? Oh, we're all going. Mm-hmm. He takes the liquid out, and he pours it, but nothing comes out of the bottle. With a measured glance, he sort of looks at it, and he like pours meticulously in every glass, but nothing comes out of the bottle in your mind. And as he does, he very carefully takes the shot glasses and lines the bar. Well, a ghost shot is better than no shot, right? To some degree. Well, no shot hands. Yep. <laughs> To, to nothing. How about that? <laughs> Shut up. I'm going to cast Detect Magic on it. Yes. Go ahead. Four goes in my mouth. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three. I'm waiting. Down. I'm waiting. Down. Um, uh, I can... She's telling us that. <laughs> um, I learned at School of Magic, if any. Okay. I mean, obviously, it's probably magical, but... Sure. Um, you... Uh, you guys watch, uh, you guys down your shots. Uh, and so he's like casting, she's like, guys, come on. Like, she pushes her glasses up. Uh, like, uh, the magic sort of flows out. Uh, you're not detecting anything in everyone else's shot glasses, with the exception of Nick's. Uh, you're detecting faint traces of abjuration magic. Okay. Wait, but I'm only detecting it in his, not everybody his else's? His and yours. Not in everybody else's because everybody else downed it there. Oh. <laughs> Oh gosh, I've got to remember abjuration. I don't remember which one that is. Uh, abjuration magic is magic that emphasizes uh, the blocking, banishing, or protecting. <sighs> of magic? So we drink I, I, I let him know. Abjuration. He would know. All right. Yep. Down it. Uh, as you drink uh, the drink, uh, the bartender looks at you and takes the bottle and slides it underneath the bar. And he says, get up. Well, that was quite friendly. We just Actually, what? <laughs> we only just arrived, and now we're out of here. Well, so we're leaving? I suppose we're going to be finding a hair in here. She'll, um, she'll slide two gold over to him. Uh, he looks at the gold and pushes it back towards you. You're going to need this. Nice. <laughs> I see your grabs and watch that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys watch. You already left. <laughs> 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 uh, as you walk outside of the shop, uh, the crowds of people are still there. It's still very sunny outside. You're not noticing any sort of physical changes uh, to yourself. Uh, uh, let's try this again. Uh, this time, adding one more dice to that roll. Uh, give me perception checks as you sort of survey your surroundings and try to get a, a feel for things. I got the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Nat one. Natural twenty. Twenty one. Twenty one. Eighteen. Uh, our two bards and our druid uh, are sort of scanning the crowd and you guys watch as a, um, a small child uh, sort of uh, is walking past everyone. It is a little boy. Uh, uh, he's wearing a sort of a plain tunic with a blue shirt uh, and bright, bright white hair. Uh, as he goes by, he's slowly walking past people and lifting their their bags up and taking things from the bag and putting them in the pocket and sort of closing it and uh, and he goes over to another person and sort of tugs on their shirt and they lean forward and sort of look around and he just starts laughing and starts walking uh, into the marketplace. I mutter white hair and I start following him. 
Cool. Yeah. Okay. Same. At, at her pointing it out, you all sort of notice and look, and you see this sort of child walking about. Um, are you doing this? No, this is just Thoey. Uh, Thoey starts walking forward. Uh, <laughs> the child, uh, the child turns around and looks at Thoey, and then sort of like looks and and like he waves back, and he doesn't say anything. He walks over to where Thoey is, and and holds out a hand. She puts out her hand. And uh, walks through the crowd and marketplace <laughs> with her. As you do, uh, people bump into you, but you notice the the boy at certain times stops and and waits as a, a cart goes by or people go by. He seems to know exactly where people are stepping and moving. Uh, at one point, he um, he comes forward and he's sort of leading you through the marketplace past all these sort of stalls and turns. Uh, he gets to one particular stall where there's people sort of selling goods and this um, old woman sort of looks down at the boy and then looks up at all of you and takes a step to the side and as she does. The boy walks into the tent. I'm going to follow him. Uh, as you all walk into the tent, uh, you see a space that is much larger than the space that you were led to believe from looking at the tent outside. Yeah. Uh, it's, big bef- on the it's big on the inside. <laughs> uh, and there's a big sign that says police box. Um, <laughs> you, uh, you walk into this light, dark blue tent, uh, and uh, before you is a wooden table uh, with six chairs uh, and a large kitchen knife resting next to each of the chairs. Like, almost like if you were sitting at the chair, there's a large kitchen knife right in front of it. next to yeah. each side of the chair. How long has it taken to get from uh, where we were in the bar to this place? Five minutes. Okay. Uh, detect magic is ten minutes long? Yes. So, what do I see as I look around me at the knife and everything? Uh, as you look around, uh, the magical... Hmm, the magical energies of the room are odd um, because it, you're detecting a, a couple of different schools of magic present. Okay. The, the most harrowing to you is that when you look at the table and you look at the knives, you're detecting faint conjuration magic and faint necromancy. <laughs> I'll walk up but unless Bowie yeah. shares that with yeah. anyone here, that's um, just something for her. <clears throat> okay, I'm, I'm muttering, I'm, but I'm trying to talk really, really discreetly and quietly because now I don't see anybody else in this room, right? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, um, I'm saying uh, uh, it's magical, it's, it's conjuration, it's necromancy. Be careful. Sounds like a Friday night. Just be all careful, in, okay? All in good fun. All in good fun. Though. We've come this far. Well, I know, but you can still be careful. Jeez, information is not harmful. It helps. We'll start walking over to the table. Yeah. Just like <laughs> examining the knives. Uh, yeah, give me an investigation check. Yay. 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 Um, that is going to be <laughs> eight. You look like sharp. Sharp enough to draw blood. Uh, they look like they would be used in a butcher shop. They don't look functional in terms of battle or anything. But I don't know. I, I wouldn't fear too much about these ones. Sharp, yes. But, How big? Uh, this is like butcher knife size. This is big, big, or this is not how big is this? Um, it's big. Like you would use to cut a like cut meat or something. And this is just one table, six chairs, knife in the middle. Six knives, one for each. Six knives, one, one for, for each. each of us. Well, that's not. <clears throat> what if this is the game? What if this is part of it? What if this is blood magic? Well, you did say you mentioned both. necromancy, so... I say we sit and see where this takes us. Um, she's... An awful idea. <laughs> Still... <laughs> she's gonna send a message to the other bard. Any clue? No idea. And then he's gonna sit down. <laughs> um, you sit down, and hovering in front of you is a cloak that appears in the middle of the table. Uh, this cloak is a bright green color. Uh, it is one that you are very familiar with. It's been whis- whispered about and bandied about for a while in s- several circles. And as you sit, this the cloak hovers. 
amidst the the table and vanishes. Do we see that? Is that something we all see, or is that like she'll sit? Uh, as you sit, an image of someone that you've drawn a picture of that you keep on your bedside table uh, floats above the table. It's just an image. It revolves a little bit and then disappears. Sitting. Uh, you see uh, yourself standing there. Uh, about from here down are these uh, black leather bands. And as you reach forward, a uh, blue arcane light shoots out of the knuckles of each hand. Uh, causing these uh, sort of blades, and as you clap your hands together again, the weapons change to that of uh, bludgeoning, like sort of maces. As you clap them again, a large bow extends from one of them. Yes. Mandrake hops over the back of the chair and lands. <laughs> and we all see all of these things, right? You all see you all, all of all these things. things. Okay. Yeah. Hopped over the back of the chair, sat down. Uh, you see a hat uh, floating in the center of the table and you realize it to be yours. Uh, but what you did not see before is the band going around the hat. It is a black band that you would wear sort of a, a, along the way. And as you sort of, you get close as you're sort of sitting backwards on the chair, the band arcs with electricity and then stops. I sit. Uh, you are all harrowed as when Thoe sits, a large green caterpillar manifests in the center of the table stares at all of you, uh, nods its head to Thoe, and then disappears immediately. So we're all just going to sit down and hope we don't die, right? Uh, really? No. And I sit down. <laughs> you sit down and see a, uh, a man with a long, black, now grayish beard, sort of sitting in a chair, smiling. And as you sit in your chair, he grabs at his chest, and he like looks down at his heart. And, and it looks like he's grabbing for where his heart is, and he slumps over in the chair and falls face first into the table. Great. All right, what do we do? How do we play this? Uh, the little boy uh, sort of walks over and, uh, and uh, sits in your lap, and as he does, he sort of takes your hand and plops it on the table like this. Uh, and Thank looks you. at all of you. Uh, and he puts the knife in your hand. And he puts the knife and everybody sort of picks it up in the other hand. And he minds taking your hand and stabbing the person next to you. Oh, God. Okay, who's sitting next to you? <laughs> uh, I think it goes just like this. Yeah. So, uh, Dave, you have a, you have a oh, spell. then I'll have no problem with this. <laughs> <laughs> We're used to stabbing. Like this. No. Yeah. You're a, you're a druid. You can do some magic. It'll be fine. I am not. Wham. Uh, <laughs> oh. uh, there is a there is a shock and a feeling of pain <laughs> as this knife cuts into your flesh. Um, as it does, the, the the little boy looks pained as well. Not like it's physical pain, but just like he doesn't like this part. You take you take uh, two points of damage. Uh, and do you say anything? Do you scream? Do you, or is you try to keep it kind of tight lipped? Uh, she would probably initially react by just stabbing. Another two points of damage. <laughs> do you say damn it? No. I okay. Don't say anything. Just... All right. No hot feelings. <laughs> <laughs> screams. <laughs> uh, as, as he screams, uh, the lights in the room grow a little dimmer, um, and a tiny bit of black smoke comes out of Mandrake's mouth and starts circling around the top of the tent. Um, as she goes... <laughs> a little bit of black smoke comes out of her mouth and, and goes up to the top. As he shakes his head, it sort of leaks out of the sides of his mouth and sort of goes up to the top. I see. I sh oh. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, oh, and as she does uh, a little bit of smoke, and you see this, is this a little bit of smoke sort of swirls and swirls and swirls, and as it does, it sort of collects and pools near the top and sort of 
falls down around you. And as it does, the table and the chairs all sort of vanish amidst this black smoke and there's a swirling feeling as you're feeling your insides get a little dizzy and you are in a wide open space. And then bright lights uh, happen as loud music starts playing and um, you all sort of uh, look like you're in your chairs but you're all sort of in a row facing a catwalk that seems to light up and sparkle with amazing lights and music as it uh, pervades your senses. As it does, two beautiful elves sort of walk down the catwalk and uh, are sort of strutting as these lights flash around and they seem to stop and pose as each of the lights sort of flash and, and, and go around them and they go, you made it, welcome. Uh, uh, the, the male elf says, and then the uh, female elf goes, we're so delighted that you could come and play the game with us. And it's like, the, uh, very few people managed to make their way here, but you did, well done. And it's like, here in the game, you have a chance to win fabulous prizes. Oh no. Uh, and they, once again, you look up and there's these large banners with each of your faces, but it almost looks like they're caught in these weird, Sort of like looks of yeah. pain, like looks of pain or like surprise. It's always looking down into the right at some point, and like, like and Nix is like ah, and his mouth is open. Uh, but, but below is a little depiction of what you each saw at the table. Um, now we can't just give away the prizes for free. Oh no, you have to earn them. Yes, that's right. They have to earn them in the suffering game, and uh, these lights sort of. <laughs> Uh, flash and pop, pop. And as they do, uh, you see the big red, like, suffering game lit up behind them on the runway. And they sort of look and point to it. <laughs> this is where you clap. <laughs> Thank you. Are their hands wounded still, or is it like now they're all mended? Your hands? No, their hands, because they've all been stabbed, so. Uh, everyone else's oh, hands? Yeah. Oh, no, everyone else's hands are still wounded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, <Rob> <laughs> um, now, in the in the suffering game, it's it, it's just a test to see how badly you really want the things that you're here playing for. Does that make sense? Yes. Who's ready to play our first game? Oh, yeah. uh, this game is very easy. You just have to spin a wheel, and they sort of point off to the side. Uh, this is inspired by one of my favorite D&D &D game. Uh, so he sort of points off to the side, thank you Griffin McRoy, uh, he sort of points off to the side and this wheel sort of like appears right in front of everybody. Uh, on this wheel are several symbols. Uh, as the wheel appears, there's a door directly across the hall from you that sort of lights up. Uh, it almost looks like, I will equate this to the Star Trek hollow deck, nice. where it's just the door outline is now just white light. Um, on the wheel are several symbols. Uh, and as you walk closer and closer towards the wheel, the symbols um, manifest themselves and become a little easier to spot. Uh, the wheel has these symbols on it. There, there are eight of them in total, and I wanna make sure I get these all correct. They are uh, a picture of an eye, a body, a skull, a brain, a backpack, a hand, a clock, and a question mark. Now, this game is very fun. It's, it, it's all about to see how far you'll go. Yes, that's right. We don't want to go too hard too early because there's lots more games to play. So there's only four lights over there, so only four of you need to spin. Who wants to go first? Thank you for giving that sorry. That awful night. Mandrake, how lovely. You come first and go ahead and spin the wheel for me and give me a D8. Five. Oh dear, oh dear. Um, Mandrake, this, this isn't too bad. Uh, you watch as the wheel sort of spins and spins and spins and it goes around and it goes around and it stops on hand. And uh, 
Mandrake, this isn't very hard. We know how very much uh, we've heard your tales of throwing your hat, and we know how hard it is for a, for a, a rogue of your stature to be dexterous. I don't think it's too much to ask. Um, we'd like a finger. Uh, we, we'll let you choose the finger, but all we want is just one little finger. Now, you can always refuse the request, but I'm afraid there will be a penalty. I'm not going to refuse. <sighs> Mandrake? May I make a suggestion? Uh, sure. Snaps and Mage Hand is in front of you. One of those. Mm, that's very clever, but he's <laughs> not going to feel it. We need a little bit of... We need to know he's felt it. Oh, punch him. <laughs> Cut the mage hand and hit him. <laughs> so, which finger, Mandrake? Uh, my pinky on my left hand. Uh, the minute he says the pinky on my left hand, uh, there is a there is a, a snap, and the pinky is just gone. Uh, it, there's a little bit of there's a little bit of discomfort and, and in pain. And you sort of look down mm-hmm. at your hand, and yeah, that face, that face right there. As he goes, <laughs> <laughs> uh, as he goes, <laughs> uh, you notice as a little bit of that black smoke comes out and says, "Now I know that seems harsh, but look, one of the lights is out. You're doing it. <laughs> well done. Uh, who would like to go next? Ooh. Yes, go ahead. A D eight. D eight. Two, my sir." Hmm. Uh, yeah, you watch as the wheel spins and spins and it lands on the body. Ooh. Well, this is, this is tricky. Uh, we, we don't want to, we don't want to scare them away. Um, so how about this, Grim? We're going to take away a little bit of your essence. The thing that makes you, you. Um, so if you do this, you'll just grant us some of your vitality. And what's what part do you wish? Translated into your max HP is going to drop by three permanently. Oh, oh, uh, oh! <laughs> 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 Suddenly, that finger thing doesn't seem so bad. Oh, great. <laughs> we know what you want. What would you use as vitality when you have those amazing weapons at your side? Well, consider when I shift, I get six more back. Do it. Uh, you watch as um, they sort of extend their hands out towards you, and uh, there is a deep, uh, there is a deep sort of sigh that emanates from Grim, and his he goes a little pale, and your max HP is dropped three points. <gasps> but one of the lights is out. You're closer and closer. Who's next? Go ahead. Thoe, this is one of the most interesting ones. Um, nothing bad is going to happen to you right now, but there are more games to play, and honestly, all that's going to happen to you is during one of those games, you're going to have a little bit of bad luck. Actually, dear, let me take this one. Five. Chivalrous. No, you have to play to win. <laughs> hmm. Five. Um, uh, so, uh, Thoe, do you accept this? Can you tell me anything more about it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what can you tell me about it? Oh, we're not going to, but we definitely could. <laughs> 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 I accept it. Perfect. Honestly, what's a little bit of bad luck? Um, you we're not as familiar with. What is your name? Gwydion. Gwydion. Yes. Um, Gwydion. Um, you've landed on the clock. 
Um, the clock is very easy. It, it, it's, it's not that big a deal. We just ask for a little bit of your time. Pretty. Mm -hmm. Pretty, you look very young and handsome. All we want is a few of those handsome years. We're going to take 20 years of your life. That's not so bad, is it? Not for what you're promising. Take it. Uh, you watch as uh, they send a hand and that fourth light goes off and uh, <laughs> Gwydion uh, seems to age in front of you uh, a little bit. Um, foragen... Foragen Nazi? Uh, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, but you do... You do feel like not, your hair gets a little lighter. Skin gets a little more... You know, not as tight and firm, <clears throat> but he, you're still ruggedly handsome. You're just you're you're less Chris Pratt and more George Clooney. Oh, just a little bit. Pull up a salt and pepper look. Yeah. Oh, yes. just um, but the fourth light goes off, uh, and as it does, there is a burst of confetti, and the lights come on again, and you hear the loud, raucous music playing. It's like you did it. The first round is done. Congratulations. And there, uh, there, you, the lights all sort of pop on around you, mm -hmm. and you see figures uh, that are sort of backlit that are all clapping and cheering for you, almost like a studio audience that everyone just seems <laughs> to be clapping. But the lights are so bright, it's hard to, to to make them out, and they're all sort of screaming and applauding. And as they do, the ground before you lights up, leading you to the doors. Walking down the way. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Uh, you go into the next room, uh, and as you do, uh, the last one of you goes through the door, sort of <laughs> shuts behind you, and there is a uh, button on a pedestal. Uh, this is the second game that we're going to play, and it takes a little bit of ex explaining. Um, this game is called the Trust or Forsake game. There are other adventurers uh, amidst the area here, and um, they're all playing in wonder just like you. Now, we're, you have a challenge coming up. Um, one, everyone roll a d20 for me. Whoever gets the highest gets to play. Straight d20? Straight d20. 17. What did I say, Mike? 6. <clears throat> 2. 18. <laughs> Eighteen. Uh, so day, trust issues. <laughs> uh, day, you walk forward now. Day, they're playing this game too. Now you have a few options. Okay, you can either press trust or forsake. Now here's what happens. The other group is also going to choose whether they hit trust or forsake as well. Now, if both groups hit trust, you are going to play this challenge the way it's normally done. Nothing too wrong for mm. either side. If you both hit forsake, oh my God, just... if you <laughs> both hit forsake, you have to play this the harder way, both sides. Now, if you hit trust and they hit forsake, uh, that's hard because that means you're going to be playing this on the hardest difficulty and they have an easier go of things. But if you hit forsake and they hit trust, you have an easier take. Do you need that explained one more time? Uh, as that happens, the button, the buttons light up. There's a green that says trust and a red that says forsake. Um. <laughs> Number three, my lord. Number three, <laughs> big three, my lord. <laughs> She's gonna look around the room to everyone here, and like. Would you like some time? Not needed. The uh, the two elves go. Let's give them time. They they, they really need to get their bearings. And uh, one holds out their hand to the other, and they sort of walk forward into the darkness until they are no longer visible. What? The hells are happening. Is that? <laughs> gonna kill Jane. That's what's gonna happen. It's a moral choice. We don't know anything about what other random group this is gonna be. They don't know anything about us. So we have to hope that they would do the right thing, right? Depends on who you are asking. 
And the right mm. is always so subjective. The right looks different on the other side of the mirror. Isn't it better if it's 50-50 and if we're going to have to take a gamble anyway to gamble on the right thing? Yes. But we have the best person in charge. You stabbed me! Now we can all go splitting hairs. But we're in good hands. Stabbing you is the right thing to do at the time. We trust them. <clears throat> so far they've been quite to their words, so I don't see why we shouldn't. <clears throat> the elves. Oh. Are we in agreement? Yes. Yes. Mandrake? Can I trust you? Yes. But first, I'm going to reach into my bag and take out the white rabbit pendant and hand it to her. For luck. Thank you. Are you ready, dears? Yes. Uh, they come strolling back in, and they've changed outfits at this point. Uh, they're both wearing, uh, 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 she is wearing this uh, sequined sort of ball gown, sort of down to her feet, and uh, he is wearing a beautiful tuxedo with a sparkly uh, silver tie. And saying, All right, uh, what has the group decided to hit? Um, as she's staring at them, she'll just hit trust. You chose... Trust and the green button is hit and it lights up. Um, very good. Let's see what the other group chose. Uh, and you look up and the the path in front of you sort of opens up and it and you see these um, you see uh, a little sort of halfling gnome rogue there with a bunch of other sort of companions behind oh, them and and they look forward and as they do they slam their hand down on the button. And it says, forsake. Oh. And it says, oh dear. Oh dear, dear, dear. Um, well, I mean, it's not great. You're just going to have a little bit of extra to this challenge. Yeah, tell you right? Yeah. Uh, good, 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 good. <coughs> so, um, <laughs> well, let the games begin. Uh, and in front of all of you, uh, the, the buttons sort of disappear, and there are some rather large, oversized dice in front of you. Um, as that happens, uh, a dice, uh, there are four of them. Go ahead and roll those dice, uh, however, whoever you want to get to roll them. You should roll them. Mm-hmm. Uh, wait, like... Just roll four d20s? Roll four d6s, please. There it is. One. Oh, and nope. Uh, what did you get the first time? Six. Uh, so you watch as a uh, <laughs> a large wolf sort of appears in the space. <gasps> You're fighting a wolf. Now, a wolf isn't very exciting. Let's make this a little more fun. Uh, roll again. Five. Ooh, this is a regenerating wolf. That means it's a little harder to kill. Uh, again? Four. <gasps> Ooh, an acid wolf. Um, now, normally, this is where the challenge would be done, but you hit trust and they hit forsake, so roll one more d6 for me. Two. Well, this is not only... A wolf that regenerates an acid, it's also invisible. <laughs> and the wolf disappears. Good luck! Oh, now, wait, didn't they... Oh, that's true. How about we do this? Um, this is the worst possible outcome for all of you. So, let's make two of them. And they snap their hands again, and you hear two growls coming from the opposite side of the room, but you do not see what they are. Let's go ahead and roll initiative, kids. Oh, that's a 24. Uh, give me 20 to 25 on initiative. Okay? Grim. All right? Uh, 20 to 15. Major? 18. 18? 17. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, 15 to 10. 
Next. And... Oh, oh no. <laughs> uh, At the pots. <laughs> ten to five? Eight. Nine. <laughs> Cool guys, this is fun. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. Um, all right, Grim, you mm. are up first. So I'm gonna try to go stealthy. I don't really know if I can. I mean, I can't. I can't. You're see. kind of out in the open. There's not a lot of places okay. for you to hide. Okay. Uh, you can make an attack roll against them. Um, but they are invisible. invisible. Right. Um, so these good. attacks are all going to be at disadvantage until that problem is rectified. Great. Okay. Oof. Okay, then I'm just going to uh, dash out in front of me and just start swinging. Just to see if I can make contact with anything. So at least try to hear where the, some growls are coming so you're, from. You're just running forward and sort yeah, of... Yeah, where, wherever the direction of the first growl I heard, just run towards that direction and just start. All right. Start uh, uh, give me an attack roll at disadvantage. Ten. Oh, yeah, ten. Uh, so you watch, and Grim's like, I got this, guys, and just sort of runs forward and starts... Does that mean unarmed strike, right? Uh, uh, yeah. Just starts... yeah. So that's 16, so... Oh, it's 16? 16, 16, yeah. Uh, actually, it's 16 hits, uh, and you watch as one of the wolves sort of screams out in pain, uh, and uh, give me a dexterity saving throw. Uh, 14. Uh, you take three points of acid damage as the blood flies off of this thing uh, and sort of splatters against you because you are fighting acid wolves. Makes sense. Uh, invisible acid wolves, but you hear a scream come from the wolves and uh, and a clapping coming from the studio audience as your your blow connects with the wolf. Uh, next up is Mandrake. What do you do? Um... I'm going to throw my hat, uh, cast Booming Blade, and throw my hat at the wolf that he just hit. Okay. Uh, I, I will say, how much damage did you do for that? Did you roll damage for that? Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. I did, yeah, I did. Yeah. Roll, roll, roll damage for that. Uh, you throw the hat at that way. I will say, yeah, I'll say that the acid is sort of like making this a little easier. I'll give you a straight attack roll on this one. Okay. Okay. So... Uh, ten. Um, ten points of damage. One six okay. plus. Yes. You're still gonna roll the head. Oh, yeah. Still gonna roll the head. Sorry. That's right. Ten. Okay. Uh, ten's gonna miss. Yeah. Plus. Yeah. All right. Uh, right. So you watch as Mandrake sort of goes forward and thinking he knows the direction of the wolf, takes his hat off and throws it. As the hat sort of flies forward, uh, it circles around for a bit and then and comes back to um, his head. Um, uh, this is the wolf's turn. The, one of the wolves is going to run forward and make an attack against the, the one thing that hit it and make a bite attack. And it's going to sort of launch forward. Uh, does a 16 hit your AC? Yes. Okay. Uh, as, it does, <laughs> as it does that, it sort of rips into you a little bit, uh, doing five points of damage. Um, uh, you have to make a strength saving throw, please. D20? Yes. Add your strength modifier to that. Uh, that is going to be... 14. Uh, yeah. Uh, the wolf tries to drag you down to the ground and sort of knock you down to, to, to stand on top of you, but as it does, you sort of reach up and grab this invisible fur and sort of push it off to the side, and you maintain your footing. You are not knocked prone. Suck it. Uh, the other one sort of uh, starts, you hear the growling start circling around, and it will uh, it'll actually go after Mandrake. Uh, Mandrake, uh, is, who all is, where are you standing? Are we putting, like, at the table? Where are you guys standing at the moment? I'll um, say that, that who's standing around Mandrake? Because you guys are all in sort of one big clump, right? I'm yeah, pretty I'm much. We're all I'll say, I'll say, I'll say, Thoey, uh, you you tend to separate yourself. From <laughs> yeah, I'm like, like, oh. <laughs> no, I don't know these people. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I walked into the wrong place, please. Um, uh, Thoey and Mandrake, uh, give me a dexterity saving throw, please. Ooh, that wasn't good. Um, six plus 
Seven. Seven total? Okay. Twenty-three. Uh, Mandrake, you sort of dodge off to the side, uh, only taking uh, five points of acid damage as this sort of eruption uh, comes out of nowhere, uh, sort of spraying in this cone. Uh, Thoe, and you take eight points of acid damage as the acid sort of shoots forth from a spot that you are unable to see and sort of starts melting away at, at, at some of the bits of cloth that you're wearing and, and on your person. Um, but after that, it is your turn, Thoe. Okay, I am going to cast a, a fairy fire at okay. the wolf that just attacked him. Okay. Um, so he has to make a dex save of 13. Um, and it affects everything within a 20 foot cube. But I think the, I don't know if the other wolf would be within that 20 foot cube. The other wolf is not, but this wolf <laughs> is. And you watch as these little sparkles sort of appear all over the wolf, uh, outlining it perfectly. Um, and also, I think getting rid of invisibility, correct? If fairy fire hits, read um, the full description of the spell. It, okay. Um, Outlined in blue, green, or violet. Any creature in the area when the spell is cast is outlined in light if it fails a deck saving throw. Um, shed dim light in a 10 foot radius. It is no longer invisible, <coughs> and you see the <coughs> faint outline of light as this wolf is sort of crouched to the ground very close to the two of them. Uh, they can't benefit from being invisible, and any attack roll against the affected creature or object has advantage. Okay, so uh, this thing is outlined in light, and this thing is glowing like a Christmas tree. Uh, Thoe, are you doing anything with your bonus action? Um, how rough is he looking right now? Not rough at all. Oh. Hmm. No, I don't think anyone's hit it. Okay. Oh, I thought he got hit. He did. That's the wolf closest to him, and then the other one's circled Yeah, no, no, around. I was thinking in terms of healing work. Oh, no, okay. Okay, okay you're good. Fine. Uh, that was Thoe. Uh, you're up, dude. All right, uh, so the one I can see, I'm going to use Ice Knife on, and I've got advantage on the attack roll. Correct. Correct. So take advantage on the attack roll. Oh, D20, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. All right, uh, what would that be? 19 plus 6, so 50, uh, 25. Did you roll both? Uh, Just to get you crit? Hit a, uh, a five and a nineteen. So. Okay, yeah, that nineteen. 19 yeah, that's twenty-five. Uh, so that's that knife is going to explode, uh, and you're doing the one that's closest to these two. I did uh, the one I can see. The one you can see. I can't. Yeah. Attack one okay. I can see. Uh, so uh, that knife is going to do one d ten of damage, and then how much shattering damage once it explodes? Okay, so one d ten, and then shattering damage will be. I, I cast it at first level, so sure. it'll be uh, two d six. Okay, you guys give me de- uh, give me dexterity saving throws. Fourteen. Target each creature with uh, twenty six. Twenty six saving throw or take two d six. Yep. Okay, so roll full damage for those. Okay. Uh, five for the uh, knife, and then six for the uh, damage from the shatter. Okay. Uh, so that knife sort of, uh, you guys watch as Nick sort of starts channeling arcane energy, the knife sort of flies forward, it hits the wolf in the side, and as it hits the wolf in the side, uh, it, the wolf lunges forward and the knife explodes. You manage to dodge out of the way of this, uh, Thoe, you are not as quick, and you take three points of ice damage as these sort of shards embed themselves into your arm, uh, down the side of it. Um, uh, that was Nick's, uh, uh, day. Oh wait, I rolled D8s. I was supposed to roll these sixes. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. No, no, no. That's fine. Uh, it's actually eight on, so it's more. Sorry. Yeah. We'll keep it the you lower keep, Yeah, you can keep it that <laughs> right now. Uh, but next time, yeah. Yeah, no uh, Hit those these sixes. No, that's good. Um, okay, so... Um, how are you looking, Thoe? You okay? okay? I'm okay. Okay. Everyone looking okay? Cool. Oh, God. I don't want to do this for you. <laughs> um, she's she's gonna cast healing word on Grim. Okay. So <laughs> that's your what? She begrudgingly cast healing word. <laughs> she's the special begrudge bard. Uh, so that's um five, and then she's gonna go yeah. ahead and uh give some inspiration over here. Oh, interesting. Okay. Because um, who are you granting inspiration to? So Grim. <laughs> If a bard begrudgingly cast it, it's at advantage, right? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Bard grudgingly. Because we, we know begrudging performances. Thank are you for catching that. <laughs> I love you. Okay. Hey, Graham. Listen. 
listen to them. If you hear the growls, you can defeat them. <laughs> Please don't die tonight. If you did, I won't be alright. Oh, well done. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Uh, you gotta get a d6 uh, inspiration, I believe, and you can add that to an attack roll or a saving roll or anything like that. So, uh. Mm -hmm. All right, Don't dude. stab me again. Oh, that was <laughs> Ow, you are up. <laughs> All right, I'm going to move to the one closest to these two. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go for an attack with my right here. Okay. And then my dagger. Uh, uh, take this attack at advantage. Yeah, say. Yeah. And then I'm going to burn one of my bardic inspirations for um, psychic blades. You got it. That is a 10. A 10 total on the at, at advantage? Yeah. Uh, a one and a five. <laughs> no, that's okay. uh, you sort of, you, you rush forward and uh, in, in an act of bravado, sort of swing the rapier and, 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 and chance to show off to everyone. And you sort of like trip over your own feet and then manage to, to pop right back up and put your hands at your side and then hurriedly rush down to pick up the rapier. And get <laughs> um, but uh, the wolf sort of growls at you. Uh, Grin, it is now your turn. I was going to uh, also swing my dagger. Oh, do it. Yeah, do it funny. Go for it. Also an advantage. Uh, uh, 16. Uh, 16 hits. For roll damage. Three. I roll all the time. No. All at the same time. So three. Okay. Uh, uh, in in order to save a little face, uh, uh, as he gets up, he just sort of smiles at all of you and pokes it really quickly. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the wolf uh, yelps in pain as he as you stab him into the side rather quickly. Um, Grim, it is now your turn. Okay. So um, I'm gonna. Just grab my glaive and then just go for any part of the body that I think is. Is there anything you would like to do with your bonus action before you do that? I mean, I don't want to. Don't want to use my shift just yet because I can. Cool. No, that's all you, baby. Yep. So uh, hit a uh, roll attack. You're, so hit, you're hitting the invisible one or the one that's glowing. How close the one for me? The one that's glowing, or how close are we? From it's it's a little. Far so away. I could use dash though and like be up on it. Yeah. No, you could just use your regular movement and go up on it. But depending on where this other wolf is in proximity to you, right. it may get an opportunity attack. But there's Damn. no way of you knowing that. Uh, whether did, it's close did, or if it's moved away or what. But couldn't I? Can I smell the acid that's leaking out of it a little bit? I mean, considering <laughs> I I hit it right. It's not. Uh, right. Give me a free perception check as you attempt to smell acid. <laughs> <laughs> Smell no, no, it. Ba baby, I'm into it. No, roll that, your, roll that G20 okay. at your perception. It's just enough. Yeah. It smells just, just, yeah. it's, uh, it's 26 to hit right now. It's okay. So, but that's cool. actually I've decided to roll. Were you rolling that at advantage or disadvantage? Yeah. That was that was for the attack roll. For oh. the okay, was that just a straight roll? Yeah, that was a straight roll. Okay, if you're okay, if you're, it's a 19 to 19 straight. Okay. And adding my uh, my modifier to it, so. I'll I'll say regardless, you <laughs> hit the invisible one that's next to you. But it's uh, a three. For what? It's a three for a smelling acid. Uh, you have no idea where this thing is. <laughs> so then, so then yeah. roll this d20 and give me another d20. Okay. Take the lower of the 19 and the one you're about to roll. So three, two, oh no. Two. Nope, uh, you whiff. You whiff hard uh, as you sort of swing outward. So cool. it, was, it would have been super, super cool. But if you want to take a, a shot at it with your dagger as well, you're more than welcome to do that. See, okay. Roll another attack for me. That's, uh, disadvantage. yeah. At disadvantage. Disadvantage. Because right. it's still invisible. Okay, so that's going to be uh, 17. 17 hits. Nice. Uh, roll damage on your dagger. Thank you, go Oops, sorry. Uh, Mandrake, you're up next. Uh, that's going to be 7. Okay. Uh, seven, another seven points of damage. Uh, you hear a, a loud yelp. You guys are doing sort of equal distant uh, damage to these things. So they're sort of, uh, they're starting to sort of cry out in pain and sort of circling you. Um, Mandrake, it is your turn. Okay, we're gonna try this one more time. <laughs> I'm gonna take my hat off, look at it, say please, and then I'm gonna throw it. Uh, casting Booming Blade again. Okay, uh, give me an attack roll at advantage. So 10. 10 total. Uh, total your bonuses. would have been 17. 
Okay, yes. So, so that's 17? Yeah. Points. So <laughs> roll your blooming your blooming play damage, because that's your bonus attack. Mm -hmm. that, that was your action, and give me your sneak attack damage as well, since you're next to Thoe. Okay. So that's two, right? 1d8, and then two d6s, yeah? Yes. So it should be three d6s. Your add is still the d6. It moved up from a d4 to a d6. Right. So three d6s. Uh, five, six, seven, 13. Two. Plus your decks? Uh, plus my decks. Uh, it's another four. So 13, 15, plus another four. So 19. 19. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys watch as <laughs> the hat sort of flies forward and it hits this thing. And as it does, it sort of uh, tears a large gash into it. It's the first time you've seen the hat sort of extend its teeth long enough so that all of you could see. And as it does, little metal serrations reach out from the hat, cutting this thing across the chest. And as it does, some of the acid blood sort of like uh, spills downward, getting on the hat. The hat sort of shakes it off and flies back into his hands. Nice. Um, it's looking rough. Um, it is their turn, however. Um, uh, one of them is going to uh, continue to make attacks against you, Grim. Uh, 24 to your AC? Yes, that is. Okay. Uh, it is going to do... Yeah. It is going to do seven points of damage to you as it sort of grabs onto your leg and sort of shakes it like back and forth to try to open up a wound. Uh, the other one is going for Thoey. Uh, uh, that's a 29 to hit. Just barely. Okay. Uh, as it does... <laughs> that should be like double damage. It does eight points of damage. Uh, you need to make a constitution uh, throw on the fairy fire. Mm, mm. Oh. Uh, crap. Uh, that was... Uh, it's, a, it's a con save? Either way, it's a yeah, six. Yeah, it's, it's a con save. No, mind, it's a six. Okay. Uh, fairy fire, correct me if I'm wrong, is a concentration spell. It is. Uh, uh, you guys watch as this wolf sort of reaches in by her leg, grabs on Thoe, bites down hard, and as it does, the, the sparkles sort of start to fade away from her um, as it sort of grabs onto her leg. However, it does not let go of her leg, and it's still sort of clamped on. You just can't see it anymore as her leg is starting to get, like, sort of pulled off in another ow, direction. Ow, ow, ow. So it is your turn. Well, I'm gonna cast fairy fire back at it. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't hard. Uh, what, what sort of save is uh, fairy fire? It is a 13 dex, but it's also attached to my leg. I'll roll it disadvantage. <laughs> <laughs> the, the first one was a 19. The second and it's one a 20 was, foot radius. was a two. <laughs> it's a 20 foot radius? Yes, it is a 20 foot radius. Are you inside that Okay, <laughs> give me a So I'm, yeah, I'm also lit up. Well, I'm also probably here. Uh, a plus, I, but, 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 I did one, nine. Nine. Uh, nine. So you guys watch as that wolf once again starts blowing up and sparkling like a Christmas tree, as well as Foey. And because of her green skin and fur, she looks like a Christmas tree. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, She's a Fraser fur. And the other one is still more than 20 feet away, right? Correct. Uh, Nyx, it is your turn. Uh, I'm going to... Oh, geez, actually, no, it's not a radius. Sorry. Definitely not going to hit the Foey again. It's the twinkle. Um, I'm going to use magic missile <laughs> on the one I can see. That. And then, do I roll a d4 for each dart? You do. Those are automatically hit. It's yeah. one of the few spells where you don't have to roll anything. As long as I can hit. see them. Level one? Uh, yes. I don't, I guess, yeah, level one for now. Okay. Uh, two, two, and two. Yeah, dude. Uh, do I, it's, it's a plus one, so three, 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 all together. Uh, you, nine points of damage, just this thing, and it's sort of like, uh, it looks like it is barely standing up at this point as these magic missiles just go do, 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 like uh, slam into the side of it. Dead. Um, so she would have seen the thing bite her, so she's going to cast Dissonant Whispers on that wolf. Okay. Um, and that's... You don't see it. Okay. Oh, Wait, you, you do see it. Yeah, they're yeah. both lit up. Yeah, okay. you do see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Dissonant Whispers. Dissonant Whispers, which okay. is a Wisdom of 13. A Wisdom of 13. Okay. To uh, it rolled a, it beat the save. It beat the save. Yep. So it takes half. It rolled a 16. Do, do, do. Half as much damage. Okay, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine is what I got, so. 
four or five. Yeah. Five, okay. Four or five. Uh, yeah. Uh, you watch as uh, you sort of uh, cast dissonant whispers at this thing, and uh, the, as the little whispers start to enter into the head, you see as the arcane energy leaves you, and as it does, uh, there is this odd and sort of confused look um, on its face, uh, and and it, it sort of like strokes to the side, and as it does, it sort of like falls to the ground as its head sort of explodes. Uh, and just sort of like falls to the ground dead. It's the first thing I've ever seen killed by a dissonant whispers. Um, <laughs> hey <laughs> Are you doing anything with your bonus action? Um, sh- she's... Hi, look at Doey. I- I- I'm still okay. Mm. Don't-, don't worry about me. Just, just... Mm. Not right now, because this is a very long game. I think. Uh, she's gonna do a true strike on um, the one he's fighting. Okay, do you need to be able to uh, see in, in, in the creature in order to do true strike? Figure out a target in range. Your magic grants you a brief insight to the target's defenses. On your next turn, you gain advantage on the first attack roll against. You the gain advantage on your first attack, attack roll against it. Is that mm-hmm. You don't. It's a self spell. You gain advantage on the attack roll. Yeah. Okay. So okay. Three so That's an action though. Not a bonus action. You're right though. Yeah, girl. All right. <laughs> no, then no, not right now. All right, my boy. It's your turn. <laughs> How big is this room? Like wide, tall? Uh, uh yeah. somewhat tall. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, I would say it's about. Uh, it was large enough so that it was. I'll say like 50, 60 feet. Cool. Circular. I'm gonna cast love take. Cool. Uh, you guys watch as uh, the world's like, peace, and like, uh, rises up into the rafters and just starts rising up away from uh, the sort of fight entirely. Call me when we're done. <laughs> you are kind of a dick. Stab <laughs> 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 like, so, so I was racing and charming. <laughs> <laughs> That's my turn. Uh, Grim, it's now your turn. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to grab my glaive and... Start swinging, so. Swing away, Meryl. Cool. It's that advantage or disadvantage, or a disadvantage, because it's, okay. Then that's going to be 11. 11 total? Yeah. Would you like to add anything to that? Unless I can use my, uh. Inspiration. Yeah, her inspiration, so. Roll a d6. Four. So, nine, 11, 13. 11 plus four? Oh. Probably yeah, nine plus four. Oh my god. I'm sorry. It's 15. Uh, 15, <laughs> 15 hits its AC. Roll damage. <laughs> nine plus four? No, nine plus four. Oh, I thought you said it was 11. Yeah, nine plus four. So nine. 14. It's 13. Plus your... Plus your it's, if it's nine, nine plus, plus four, 13. it's 13. Right, I thought you were saying... Oh, guys. No, I, I got five. We'll have to spell it. We're good at that. Is 11. Is 11 plus four. Math is 15. Plus four. You get 15. It's 15. It's 15. I'm not going to say it. Um, yeah, like you, you roll uh, damage. Cat. Hit him with the glare. Chased. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> okay, so that's going to be 10. 4 plus 6. Which is a nice turn. Good job. Thanks. <laughs> it starts bleeding. Are you going to do anything else with this turn? Uh, I have my dagger on my opposite hand, so I'm just, if, if I. If you I, do? You can also action surge and hit it again? Ooh, yes, it is this. <laughs> yes, action surge and just yeah, run the top of the head. <laughs> yeah. Right uh, you'll take a little bit of acid damage, but That's you can fine. see this thing, so this is a straight up attack roll. Okay. Uh, take two points of acid damage as okay. you sort of uh, slam the glaive into it. Okay, I'm just rolling another D. Okay, so that's going to be six. Uh, did you roll to attack? Oh, sorry. My first sorry. damage, yes. That's yeah, all right. Okay, so, so that's going to be 22. Yes, that will hit. Uh, roll damage again for me. Did it's the same thing. Okay. So, yeah. Six points of damage. Six plus four, ten. Okay, so ten points of damage. As you see, there. Uh, this thing, as it sort of screams out in pain one more time, uh, it's 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 sounding hurt, uh, sounding pretty bad off. Um, so Mandrake. Um, so it's sounding it's sounding pretty bad, but we can't see this one. No, you can throw the hat, but it's going to be a disadvantage. Um. Over here. <laughs> um, oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna throw the hat. All right. Give me a, an attack roll with disadvantage. 
<laughs> that sort of flies forward, and as it does, uh, it sort of circles around the central point, and you hear this, you hear this, ha, ah, from up above, you know, ah, as that sort of flies forward, and then comes right back to your side. Uh, it is now the wolf's turn. You're um, doing amazing, sweetie. Yeah. <laughs> You're doing a wonderful job. Uh, as it sort of reaches forward, and... Um, will send out a spray of acid towards the three of you, uh, sort of backing up at the same time. So I need dexterity saving throws from everyone there. 18. 18? 11. 11. <laughs> uh, 12. Okay. Uh, you take four points of acid damage. Two of you take eight points of acid damage. Great. You still up? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, that was the wolf's turn. Thoey. Okay, I'm going to try to um, do fairy fire on the other one. Can I get close enough to him? Uh, sure. It's going to do an act- attack of opportunity, though, isn't it? Uh, no, because the one next to you is dead. Oh, that's right. Duh. Yay. Okay. Um, you know what? Mm, ye, mm, I don't know how long this game's gonna be. I'm really afraid to use that last spell slot. Um, you know what? Uh, change that. I'm going to uh, cast a uh, cantrip uh, infestation at him. Oh, okay. And I'm going to send a cloud of mites and fleas and other parasites. Where are you sending these? In the general direction of it. So it's advantage, I know. Uh, of oh! Of and got it. That's okay. right. No, no, no. It's the target. No, no, no. It's the target. It doesn't say anything about Please. it affecting other people. I was going to say, I already have fleas. No, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I was under the impression, and I may not know the spell well enough. Um... Appear momentarily on one creature you can see within range. They appear on that creature. Oh, but I can Can see. I can't see it. Nope. Crap fairy fire. Okay. Wait. (sighs) Uh, It fails to save. Uh, So once again, the other wolf is lit up uh, with a bright light. Thank goodness the druid learned fairy fire before this fight and had this in her back pocket. Uh, that being said, Nyx, it is now your turn. All right, if I can see it, I'm going to, again, uh... It is separate from everyone else, so you have this sort of a clear path to yeah, it. I'm still gonna... Mm, I'm trying to think of, I guess... Uh, okay, so it moved away from Grim. Yes. I thought it was, okay. No, yeah. I needed to back up to hit you all with the acid. Yeah, I'll, I guess it'd be smarter to... See what's the range on that frostbite? Yes. Or is it looking rough? You said. Yes. Yeah. Uh, From what you can see of it. Frostbite. Okay. Uh, what is frostbite? So, what do I need to? Uh, Constitution uh, fourteen. Nope. Fails at six. Right, so one d six damage. Okay. And that'll be three. Okay. Uh, so, uh, a blast of cold energy sort of flies out from next minute. It does this sort of surrounding the wolf. Uh, the wolf sort of slumps down to the ground a little bit. It is it is not down yet. Uh, Aubrey, it is your turn. Aubrey Faith. Is how far is it? Uh, I would say it's fifteen feet away from you. Okay, she's she's gonna go up and just try to dagger this thing real quick. All right, give me an attack at advantage. Um. <laughs> Uh, 16. 16 hits. Roll damage for me. Uh, Al, you are up next if you're going to do anything but levitate. Uh, it's yeah. four. Five, six, seven. Sorry. Seven. <laughs> seven. Uh, okay, uh, you, you watch as, uh, as you sort of run forward and um, you stab it, Day, you stab it in the side with the dagger, and as, it, as you do, it, uh, it lunges out instinctively, but it doesn't quite get at you, and it's it's a stiff breeze could knock this thing over, but it is still standing at this point. <laughs> As a bonus action, you see it and it falls. No, no. <laughs> Al just comes up to that punch elbow. Al, it is now your turn. Uh, we'll look over and tell that uh, I wouldn't even make a coat with fur like that. For me, vicious mockery. Don't you dare kill this thing with vicious mockery. <laughs> Please kill this vicious mockery. <laughs> you make fun of it. Oh my god. Um, uh, Alright, so what is the save on vicious mockery? Wisdom. Versus 13. 
You... Oh, please make fun of it to death. <laughs> um. Uh, <laughs> all for applause. Okay. All for applause. So he uh, he makes fun of this roll, roll damage. <laughs> Three. Roll your one d four of psychic damage. Three. Okay. <laughs> Uh, you guys watch as this bard is sort of floating and he makes fun of the wolf and uh, I wouldn't even make a coat out of your fur. And the wolf looks really sad for a second. <laughs> and just sort of like lays on the ground and just like slumps <laughs> and like goes to sleep forever. <laughs> like, it used to be super proud of its coat, but it just dies of embarrassment. I just got to a PSA on bullying. <laughs> <laughs> Cyber bullying it to <laughs> death. <laughs> There is another burst of confetti, uh, and uh, you did it. Well done. Uh, let's see how your other group fare. And uh, you see an image of the other side, and it's just uh, it's that rogue again with some uh, people behind it, and the rogue's just like flipping you guys <laughs> and doing a little dance. And it's like, well, they really had an easy go of things. It was the best possible outcome for them. But hey, the looks like they're happy you made it. Uh, and another white door sort of opens up. Go through. through the door. Through the door. As you go through the door, uh, the, you see the wheel again. And another four lights lit up across the way. <sighs> My god, I'm too old for this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Day steps forward. Just trying to get the hell up out of here. Okay, give me a D8. That's a six. Six. Uh, you watch as you sort of... <laughs> oh, dang. Oh, no. How mean do I want to be here? Paula? Uh, um, uh, the, the wheel spins and spins, and uh, they're in uh, a couple of different places this time. And um, uh, What did you get, Dang? Mm-hmm. A six. Bye, Dang. It's nice to know how I feel. Dang? Sure. Dang's about um, You've landed on, uh, mine. Um, we, we want to take a, a memory from you. Now, you don't have to give it up. Um, what about, what about your, a day from your childhood? Which one? A good day. Which one? His birthday. It's just one. You'll remember everything else. But this one day is ours. The birthday? Yes. Oh. Um. Does she, so she remembers, like, the other birthdays that they've had, just not... That you remember all of them. We just want this one particular one. It will just appear as any sort of ordinary day. Okay. Uh, she says okay, and there is a moment where this sort of uh, sort of hazy fog goes through and uh, drifts through the air, and you don't remember that day. It's just gone. Uh, but one of the lights. Exactly. Oh, you all look so sad, but it is the suffering game. I'll go over to it. Okay. A little more weary. Number one. <laughs> Why do I feel this going to be awful? This is the... Uh, you watch as the wheel sort of spins and spins, and it lands on I. Mm-hmm. And it goes, uh, Grin, you're a formidable hunter, are you not? Yes. Oh, no. Um, now, we don't want to go too hard, because like we said, there's lots of games to play, but... Grim, do you have the ability to see in the dark? Yes. We would like your dark vision, Grim. <gasps> That's all we want. I, who knows? I mean, you'll be able to see just fine. Look at all these magic users. All we're going to take is your dark vision. You'll still have your prowess as a fighter and a hunter. And how long do you want it for? Well, it wouldn't be the suffering game if we gave it back to you, would it, Grim? (sighs) 
Fine. Uh, Grim, the... Nothing happens, you don't feel anything, but you guys watch as Grim's eyes, the color gets a little lighter and duller. And there's some of the shadows creep in a little bit darker. Two lights down! What about you? Have you spun the wheel yet? Next? Would you like to? How about a deal? If you do it, we'll erase two lights. It's like a BOGO. I don't think you understand what I want. No. Would you like us to change it? You have to no. express what you want. No. I just have no desire to spin that wheel. Mm. All right, then. I'll spin it. All right. Same deal, two lights, I'll spin it. No, no, dear. That's not how it works. Spin it. Fine, I spin it. So we need a eight. Five. Uh, the, it lands on backpack, and they look at you and they go, Hey, Zoe? Yes? Bad luck. And oh. the wheel... <sighs> and it lands on uh, the question mark. Uh, Zoe, um, this is a fun one. You've seen the sacrifices that everyone else made. Um, what are you going to give us? Now... You're going to make a sacrifice, and you can sacrifice items, proficiencies. Um, you can give as much or as little as you want. But if it's not enough, you'll have to do the whole thing over again until we're satisfied. So what are you sacrificing to the wheel, Thoe? <sighs> Languages. There's so many up there. Spells. <clears throat> This is your fault. Hmm. I... Let's make that very clear. I open my bag. Okay. God, I don't want to do this. I open my bag and I get out... I get out the dragon scale. You're giving us the dragon scale? Is that it? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. That's that's a lot right there. You have no idea how... Well, if this is all you want to give up, we're just double-checking. Yeah. Hmm. And they walk forward and they pick up the dragon scale and they look at it. This is acceptable. And they put it with them, and one of the lights goes off, and there's one left. Just one more. I'll go. The tetra is <clears throat> thick up in here. Eight. It goes around, it goes around again, and it goes back to the question mark. Mm. Mandrake, we feel like it's boring to do the same one back and forth, so I think we'll offer you the same deal we offer Thoey. How about just a little bad luck in the next challenge? Fine. The light goes off, and you see uh, the, the, the sort of uh, lit sort of um, doorway open up across the room and says, wonderful, you're all doing such a good job and you're almost there. Walking through. Any other questions before you go? Is this the last one? Oof. I don't know. I mean, there's probably a few more after this. There's no way of knowing. Walk through. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. Uh, you go through, and uh, uh, before you is a um, another button that says trust and forsake. <sighs> um, uh, Nix, uh, we've decided that this game is specifically for you. So you're going to play. 
Uh, we just need to know if you're going to um, hit trust or forsake. You don't. You remember spinning the wheel? Is it the same group again against us? <laughs> Possibly. What? What do you guys think? I don't think you should ask me at this point. I think everyone else is given something. You should make this decision. Trust. Uh, you walk forward and hit the trust button, uh, and there, there is, <laughs> there is a flash, and uh, both the elves sort of look over at Grim and goes, "He gets it." Uh, there is another moment where. The screen lights up, and uh, the letter TRUST appears on the screen, as the other group has also hit the word TRUST. Um, uh, uh, as, as that happens, uh, there, is a, uh, there is a bit of a movement outside, and they go, Well, if you'll excuse us for a minute, we, we have to go see to the other group and, and uh, explain to them the rules of this particular game first. Uh, and the two elves sort of disappear into the darkness a little bit. Um, as they do, um, there is a rustling of movement as the little white-haired boy sort of runs into the room and uh, sort of looks at all of you and goes over to the, to the door and where the two elves just sort of disappeared and he pulls a lever and as he does there's a small podium that raises up that says bonus round healing and um uh you see a little placard that shows up and the little boy runs off and you say um one member can stand here and hit a button and transfer health points to anyone else in the party oh. um we had health wise people. 16. 16. <laughs> I ran up. Dolly, what are you at? I'm You're at the same. I'm at 22. No, but I can heal. But you can heal. So can I. <laughs> uh, who are you transferring hit points to? Great. Okay. Uh, how many are you transferring? How much do you need? Uh, to get back to max. Mm -hmm. 33 minus 16. <laughs> So you need 17. 17. 17. That's going to be a huge hit. Take 15. Uh, you watch as uh, sort of uh, necromantic energy uh, goes and travels up through the button and into uh, your newfound friend. And uh, there is a, a gasp of pain as uh, the uh, energy flows through the air and floats over towards you, Grim. Many thanks, friend. Just don't let me die. Uh, there, there is a bit of a commotion uh, from the other room, and you see the two elves come in, and it says, Well, sorry about that. Uh, we had uh, a couple of folks who weren't quite happy with another challenge. They've been here for a while, so, um, so we may have to, uh, to cut this game short a little bit. Have you enjoyed your stay here, playing the game? It's delightful. You're having fun? It's to die. Yes, well, we have many people that come through here, and, and um, here's the problem, though. How do we advertise for something like this? I mean, it, it's very hard. Does anyone here know the most effective form of advertising? What about? Wow. Hey, Mandrake? Yes. Bad luck. Uh, Mandrake's eyes close. And he falls backward. Duke. And he gets up. Uh, well, everyone, I've had such an uh, enormously fun time with you all here in Wonderland. And, and I, I feel like they're absolutely right. I, I, I feel like we should go and, and share the good word that we've had a good time. And I, I can bring you know, the hat with me and sort of share our adventures and... Uh, Mandrake, you are witnessing all of this as a spectral form in the room um, that's sort of standing there. No one else 
sees this, but you right. see your body sort of moving independently from you as this one goes. What, what do you say? Uh, should we all head back home to Bagby and, and, and sort of make our way out in a Put door? Put him back. I'm sorry, what? Put him back. Uh, put who back? This is not this is not the man we came in with. Well, put no, Mandrake it's, back. It, it's me, Mandrake. So quick to leave. You were more for this. Well, I, I don't think we should all leave. I, I think you all should stay and, and continue to enjoy all that Wonderland has to offer. And the suffering game. Day looks at the hat, like, for any help. Uh, I, you look at the hat, and the hat sort of, like, all of a sudden, like, the hat shifts its attention down and, like, looks over and, like, like keeps, like, sort of tilting its head, and as it does, it sort of cocks and it looks off and, like, points directly at you. Right. I'm going to move over as the spectral form and swipe at the hat. Okay. See if I can knock it off the, of Mandrake's head. Uh, the, the hat, uh, independent of anything else, sort of falls off of off of the head of, of this uh, of Mandrake and Mandrake sort of goes to reach for it and it rolls across the ground as it rolls across the ground it, it gets closer to where your spectral form is and you watch as two sort of ghostly hands pick up this hat off the ground and put it on and you can suddenly see the blue outline form of Mandrake standing in the room uh, wearing this hat she'll like bow to the hat like a little well, that's no fun if you're just going to cheat all day. Well, it's not cheating if you use your resources. Hmm. Very well. Maybe this was a good rough draft, don't you think, sister? Well, yes, I think it was. I think we learned very much. And you know what's going to be even more fun? The final draft. Uh, as they say this, there is a, uh, there is a puff of black smoke and the smoke all around the room sort of disappears. As you look, uh, you see a small sort of domed room, and you see similar nine or ten other domed rooms with figures in the room. You are able to put together, uh, your body sort of hits the ground, you walk forward to it, place the hat on, and sort of stand up in okay. where the body was. Um, you look around the room and you see that there are other n nine other do domed rooms, uh, people of various ages, makes, models, you see that same rogue figure from before the earlier game, sort of standing there. Um, as you look down, you also notice that your pinky is back. Uh, you have not aged quite uh, as much as before. Uh, your memory comes flooding back of that particular day. Um, and you notice other similar shocked faces around the room. Uh, that seem to appear, and as that as that happens, the little boy uh, sort of flits about uh, the room, sort of looking at people and checking on them. And as he does, he he uh, sort of co goes over to the next group, and uh, a door opens in this sort of large warehouse space, and people start scrambling towards the daylight, uh, looking for it. Um, uh, among the wall are several things. There's uh, paintings and photos, and it looks like little packets of information on each and every one of you uh, that's sort of placed up against the wall, along with um, uh, a two gauntlets that are made of the same black leather that sort of goes down the arm like this. Um, you see uh, a body of a young man sort of tied and up against the wall a little bit that looks very familiar to you. You've sort of memorized this photo. You see a cloak uh, up against the wall. Um, you see a band sort of tied against the wall to that. And uh, you see uh, a map sort of tacked alongside the wall, not too far away from where you are. I go towards the map. Okay. Uh, on the map is a, uh, is a map of wonder with a specific place marked in a big red X. Uh, upon further investigation of the of the map, as you look at it and you start to memorize it, give me an investigation check. Uh, 18. Uh, you start memorizing the features and where it is, and as you start to look at it, the map sort of turns into that same black smoke and sort of disappears into the ether, floating up to the ceiling. 
So are you saying that we're going to be back? Are you saying that, that, that this was like a, a, a rehearsal or a, or a test and the, that the prizes are really there? The, the elves are no longer in the room. I'm saying it to like... The ether? Yeah, like, like, like maybe they can hear us. Uh, you don't get a response, but you might hear the faint sound of a laugh echoing off in the distance. The body is like, it's, you said it's like tied to the wall. Is it like behind glass? Is it? No, it's just tied up against the wall and it's like looking at you and like opening its mouth and closing its mouth and, and, and trying to like, it, but it's, it's gagged. And so you see the mouth going like this as it's trying to like come down from the wall. She's untying, she's trying to untie, she's trying to... Sure, you uh, get the ropes off and um, as it does that, you pull the gag off of its mouth and... You, you hear one word, you hear, you know, sister, and as it says sister, it disappears in a puff of smoke and disappears out of the room. And she's crying, and we're not okay, <laughs> and this isn't all right. Gauntlets. Uh, yeah, the gauntlets are the same thing. You feel them, you yeah. feel the power course yeah. through your hands, the ribbon. Uh, the, the odd thing happens when you all walk forward and all of these things start disappearing, and there is a... Uh, flashes the, the the cloak itself starts to turn into the black mist and then there is a there is a burst of arcane energy and the 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 smoke is pushed away forcefully and the cloak falls to the ground get it I see you're just gonna walk over to it you're okay. gonna look down and go honestly at this point I don't trust it Maybe it needs you. Maybe you need it just like Mandrake's hat. She's going to try, like, at this point, she's trying to grab onto anything to see if it's real. So she's grabbing. Uh, you grab onto the cloak, and it feels like a cloak. I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful green cloak, and it seems to shimmer with uh, uh, different sort of energies as they sort of, like, ripple through it. But there's a, there's a green sort of, like, vibe to the, to the cloak. It feels solid in your hands. Um, uh, more people are sort of running out of the room uh, in, in various stages of confusion and, and distress. And, um, and uh, as, as that happens, uh, the, the little boy, uh, seeing that everyone has left the room, uh, sort, of, uh, sort of comes up to you and, um, and sits down on the ground with you. She's going to sit down. Um, as he uh, sits down on the ground, he pulls out a, a, a sort of a pouch that he has at his side. He, he takes a, a, a little seed and puts it on the ground, and as the seed hits the dirt ground, a, a large blanket sort of unfurls from the seed, uh, teacups and various sort of um, uh, pastries and goods and food is sort of uh, deposited on the blanket. He does not wait. He starts um, pouring tea for himself, and it's almost like a child's tea set, it's different from the ones that you guys have before, mm -hmm. it's little tiny ones, and you're having to take little sips and, and, and have food if you were to partake of, of the food itself. I sit down to tea. Yeah. I pull out my yeah. teacup, this might, this might be a hint, guys, I pull out my teacup. Why aren't we supposed to bring something back? The only thing we got was the cloak. Uh, do you take a sip from your teacup? Not yet. Not yet. But what, what about the child? He's just sitting there, like like drinking his tea. Can't can we take him with us? She'll fold the cloak and set it in her lap. Okay. And she'll start to imitate the child, like with her pinky out and everything, and start like. You guys all watch as Day sort of uh, sits forward, uh, picks up the teacup, uh, and, and and imitates the child, and he puts his pinky up, and she puts her pinky up, and she brings the mm. the the teacup to her mouth, and as she does. Uh, the shot glass comes down and hits the bar, and uh, you all are putting your shot glasses onto the bar uh, in the morning, uh, and the bartender takes the bottle and puts it underneath the bar. <laughs> so did that happen? It won't happen. Have we been here the whole time? Yeah, I gave you a shot of the good stuff. It's called the White Rabbit. And what time? What time of day is this right now? You go run outside. Yes. Yeah, it's morning. So, no time appears to have passed. No. I didn't 
Can I run to a dark area? <laughs> sure. To see if my dark vision is, <laughs> is still there. Uh, you guys watch as he just like sticks his head underneath like a dump. And it's like, yeah, you can see. <laughs> <laughs> I look for the, 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 the scale. Oh, God. Dragon scale? I have the scale. You have the dragon scale. What are we supposed to do? Does she have the cloak? She does have the cloak. Is this... Is this what we're supposed to bring back? He was, I wasn't told you know, to be You're just... somehow only helpful when you want to mock somebody. <laughs> Ironic. We're all given different skills to you. Well, this is <laughs> something we probably don't know enough about. You I miss have... the salt and pepper. You have to know something about the cloak. We all knew our gifts. It's green. It's a cloak. All I was told is that there was powerful magic items. She'll hold her teacup out. <clears throat> well, if we, have, if we have what we need, we might as well go to the club. We might as well. Let's just do it. Let's just, let's just go. Pinky's out, y'all. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what is uh, your passive perception? Um, it is a 13. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, everybody takes their cups out. Uh, everybody sort of clinks their... Uh, glasses forward and as you go to clink your glasses forward uh the uh bard in the bar goes uh brings up a similar glass brings it forward and then stops it right before it clinks and sips uh as you guys start to swirl off into the distance uh he reaches into his bag and pulls out a beautiful green cloak that looks identical to the one you have in your hand he tips his hat towards you and you are in Cheshire's bar don't find me. I'll find you. <laughs> it may be too late for fates. We've had two fates in a row. We may have to save the fates, or are we still going? Oh! Uh, we've had two fates in a row. 300 bit fates. We have. Right in a row. We have. Okay. That's <laughs> perfect. That's <laughs> perfect. Uh, that uh, we do not have a good or a bad. We need to find out from Hefsky, and we need to find out from the Plaster Dragon. Perfect. Um, so, as you guys appear in the bar, uh, uh, Jamie is meeting you in the, in the main area. Uh, as Jamie meets you in the main area, uh, there is a brief uh, pause as he sort of uh, steps forward. And as he steps forward towards you, he goes, uh, did, you, uh, did you receive the... Yeah, um, here. Did you receive the cloak? Did you get it? Uh, he, he, you hand the cloak over to him, and uh, we'll say that this is Hefsky. Thank you so much. I've been waiting to do something like this, Hefsky. Uh, you uh, hand over the cloak, and uh, give me a d20. Fourteen. Uh, you hand over the cloak, and as it, he takes the cloak from you, uh, there is this uh, brief squeal uh, as he grabs the cloak from you, and, and the cloak starts shaking. Like this, it starts like, like m- moving, and he he drops the cloak to the ground, and the cloak skitters on the floor, and starts like climbing up the walls of the circular room. He's like, bloody hell! Um, somebody grab the cloak, please. Am I sensing that there's an an animal intelligence to the cloak? There is an animal oh. intelligence to the cloak. Um, can I try talking to it? Uh, sure. Can... Uh, you can certainly. Speech of beast and leaf. Uh, it is, it's not... Oh, I can't understand them, but I can talk to them. Okay, uh, what do you say? Um, it's okay, we're nice. D- d- don't run away. So this thing's just scattering up and down the walls. Um, so, the, okay. Um, Are you a grappling thing? I'm, uh, I'm gonna cast just the brim, hop into the hat, and fly over to the cloak. Uh, the cloak, uh, go, uh, the hat goes closer to the cloak, and you see as the cloak, um, a large gaping maw uh, sort of opens up and it clicks <laughs> down onto the uh, brim of the hat. It shakes it like a dog and sort of spits it on the ground. The cloak that spits works. the hat on the ground. Yes. Uh, as it okay, spits, well. <laughs> as it spits the cloak on the ground, uh, you watch as the um, of this little tiny like blob, I would say about this tall, uh, sort of like. Uh, sits on the ground and sort of like looks over at all of you and um, uh, you you hear 
Well, this I is hop him. back out of the hat. <laughs> since this is the first thing she saw since she stopped touching the cloak, she's gonna walk over and like kneel down to it, like and just hold her hand out. Uh, as you hold your hand out, um, give me an animal handling check. Oh. Ah. Nine. Uh, the, 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 the creature sort of like blobs over to where you are and, uh, and it comes over to where you are. It gets close to your hand. It like, it like gets close to it, touches the skin and then turns into a candlestick. The cloak turns into a candlestick? The blob that the was blob. the cloak turns into a candlestick. But, okay. Right. Um, she's gonna pick the candlestick up. Uh, as you pick the candlestick up, it's sort of wriggling in your grasp and it turns into a hairbrush. And it turns into a hand mirror. Calm down. Give me another animal handling chuck at advantage. I can. Twenty-one. Uh, you hear a faint purring now as the candlestick has sort of slowed down and it's turned it back into this little pink carnivorous mm-hmm. blob as uh, the tiny mimic identifies you as its caretaker. <laughs> She's just gonna start like petting it and be like, "That's a good clue." Uh, do you know the viral video of the man? Like, one of the most relaxing things you can do is pet a dog. Like, it really releases oxytocin. Like, as you as you pet it, it's the. <laughs> That's fine. This is where we're at. The is really it's happy cool. and just sort of petting this 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 mimic. Oh, that's a good and- clue. <laughs> uh, as it sort of freaks out. Um, it's funny, you made a similar sound the other night. Uh, long to come. <laughs> Jamie, uh, Jamie looks utterly destroyed and distraught. And as he stares forward, uh, as he stares forward, um, Brian, I know you have access to this plaster dragon. Give me a D20. Uh, uh, and it's, oh, give me a D20. Um, uh, mm-hmm. wherever you are, Plaster Dragon. Um, is somebody going to explain to me what happened? <laughs> this game was not exactly friendly, nor was it... Where's your contact? Where's the cloak? We thought we had it, this and is... we had mm. this. This isn't the cloak? No, that's a mimic. You really should vet your contacts a little better. He is, ne- the, the, he is never drinking in this bar for as long as I live. He did this whole... All right. That no good. Dirty rotten. Uh, all right. All right. Uh, the scoundrel has upscounded with the cloak. Um, y- you all were supposed to get the cloak in order to get paid. Instead, you got a mimic. But by the looks of you, you've had a rough day. Correct? Quite. Um, tell you what I'm going to do. You're going to go right back there. And you got 15 minutes total before I'm sure he can abscond from out of town. Track him down. Get the cloak back. Do you understand? Yes. Go yes. back to the tipsy... What it was? The yep. tipsy total. Tips total. All right. All right. Get me the cloak. And you're back. <laughs> as soon as we Come get back, in. I take the rope of climbing out of my bag. Okay. And say his name. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, would you have stayed in the bar? Fuck no. No, you're <laughs> okay. okay. I would have cast invisibility, invisibility and made my way as far away as I possibly could. Okay, uh, give me uh, survival checks as you all start to do this. You give me a stealth check and advantage as you do this. Uh, but we are looking for survival checks at advantage. Um, give me stealth. Does he have anything recognizable on him, any sort of object that I could cast locate on? He's got a brand. And I just got a nat 20. He got a brand. I I also got a 20. You got a nat 20? No, but I got a 20. She got a nat 20. I also got a nat 20. Oh! Okay. So, uh, tell you what, roll off, kids. Roll it again. You both got a nat 20. Um. Uh, mm, this is about stealth or is this about locate object? This is, survi- this is this checking. Is you survival. don't roll for locate object. Okay. Locate object, Got you can count. No, no, no. This okay. is just Thoe so runs out of the bar and she's like looking at the ground. She's looking for any sort of tracks. 
Both of you roll off. Uh, tell you what, you add your dex and what's your highest modifier? Wisdom? Uh, probably wisdom, yeah. You I'm add your sure. wisdom. Yeah. Another natural. <laughs> uh, say thank you to the Plaster Dragon because this was not how this was supposed to go. Uh, we say thank you to the Plaster Dragon. Thank you, Plaster Dragon. Uh, so Thoey runs out and like a bloodhound just starts sniffing the ground and gets very feral about it. And then she realizes that she's allergic to dust and pollen, so she stops sniffing the ground uh, and, and just sort of like looks up. And as she looks up, she manages to just cast. Uh, off in the peripheral um, uh, of invisible footprints uh, sort of leaving tracks in the dirt, and Thoe takes off like a shot. What is your movement speed? 30. 30? Uh, what is your movement speed? I am also 30. Uh, Thoe, you take off at a sprint. I assume that you guys are following behind her? Yep. Mm-hmm. With, with, with the boots that I have, uh, the... Yeah, what are they? The, what are they? Sorry, yeah. Zuki is trying to climb up my leg. <laughs> 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 Like, can I just, like, have her tell me about don't, she's Those don't affect movement speed. They're well, just I can, about... I can jump, though. Uh, so you're trying to talk to her as she's... As we're running, I'll be like, hey, how, how far up? Just hopefully I can, like, just take a huge... Uh, uh, jump give me... Forward. Sure, give me an athletics check as you jump into a crowd of people trying to attack all an invisible um, person. That's going to be 18. Okay. Uh, I would say that you, you jump into the crowd and you just about clear everybody there. But it's still a crowd full of people, yeah. uh, so you kind of trip over two or three people, but it's just enough noise to alert you that there are people now running towards you, uh, And because Grim, one of the fellows just like fell a- a- into a group of people. Do you take <laughs> off running? I cast fly. <gasps> and I'm off. How, 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 Why what, are you... What's your, your <laughs> With fly? Yeah. 60. Uh, he suddenly goes visible as the invisibility spell is dropped from his person. How close does he when he goes visible to me? He's 60 feet away. Damn. Uh, give me a initiative roll as the two of you are sort of at every... Archers, archers. What's uh, a mimic cloak speed? Is he still within 30 feet of me? Like, or no, because he was ahead of me Holy to start with. He jumped and he was ahead of so, me to yeah, start never mind. Uh, Everybody give me initiative rolls. Because I imagine and this is a mad dash <laughs> oh for out to make it out of the city. <laughs> Do I can't believe <laughs> this was not how this adventure was gonna go? At I, all. I can still catch you. I can still catch you. Okay, uh, twenty uh, to twenty-five. Feet in turn. What'd you get? Twenty to twenty-five. I got twenty. Twenty total. Yeah. Are you rolling that twenty? I got no, I got sixty plus four. Okay. So t- all right. So Grim is twenty. Who got twenty to fifteen? Eighteen. Eight. Seventeen. You got an eighteen as well. Roll off the two of you <laughs> <laughs> again. <laughs> Uh, Just a straight That answer. was a three. Eleven. Okay. Uh, I got a sixteen, so just throwing it out there for that twenty-five thing, whatever. <laughs> okay. Uh, Aubrey Faith. Does the mimic act on my turn? <laughs> the mimic does act on your turn. I would allow you to throw it because of the rule. Of oh rule. yeah. Right. Uh, next, uh, Grim. Uh, it is now your turn. It's gonna take all. It's gonna take half your movement to get up off the ground, out of the, untangle yourself. Right. From these people, but you watch as uh, uh, as you don't see anything at this point. You just uh, you've landed in the ground. You see sort of uh, imprints in the dust, but you know that you're close to wherever this person is. But he's like in the air. Nope, or... you don't see anything at this point. This is we rolled initiative. Okay. Um, oh god, I'm gonna. Oh god, <laughs> I'm gonna get up and shift. Okay. And. Hopefully, because I can kind of try to lunge at him. Uh, you could just run in, uh, lunge indiscriminately. Or, so I, I can't see him. I can't. You can't see him. see him. You could hold your movement. Or hold your. You can't hold your movement. You can hold your action. So you could prepare something in your hand. Okay, I'll just, yeah, I'll just have my glaive and my uh, my dagger ready. You pull your glaive and your dagger out. Yeah. You're just sort of standing there I'm like just, this. Yeah. Uh, all right, uh, you're dropping invisibility, you're casting fly, Yep. and you're taking off into the air. Yep. What's your flying speed? 60. 60 feet. 60 feet. Uh, oh. are, you, are you using your movement to just start flying off into the air? Yeah. Okay, uh, what is the uh, fly, I imagine, is in action, mm-hmm. so you can get the full 60 feet. So you guys watch as he goes, uh, uh, as Al goes, uh, full blown Superman and just straight up into the air, starts flying as fast as he can. Thoey. And if I can get over a building so they can't see me, that's what I'm doing. 
Okay. Thoe, uh, you watch as Al sort of takes off and it starts is is pretty high up in the air away from you at this point. Yeah. Um, if he's more than 30 feet, there's really not a lot I can do is the problem. Because I can't fly yet. Yeah. Okay. I'm missing something. Oh no, 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 you're good. Um, Mandrake, what do you do? Um, are the buildings fairly tall around us? Fairly tall. Okay. Um, I would like to cast Expedious Retreat. Okay. And begin running up the side of the building. You're gonna to par- try to you're get to You're gonna parkour to up up the building. Yes. What does Expedious Retreat give you? Uh, it. This spell allows you to move at an incredible yeah, pace. Straight up. When you cast this spell. And then as a bonus action on each of your turns until the spell ends, you can take the dash, dash action. So you can move 60 feet. Um, <laughs> give me an athletics check <laughs> as you try to parkour your way up. Athletics up, or acrobatics? Acrobatics as you try to parkour yeah. your way up, mm. up, up the building. Roll high. You know. How Nat 20. Oh, oh nice. <laughs> Wow. Mandrake, <laughs> Amy, this is... What, four nats, what, three nat 20s from you guys? Three and four all together. Four, four all together. Uh, you guys watch as Mandrake goes tracking, 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 got him, and finds two buildings relatively close together and just goes, do, 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 Mario triple jumps. <laughs> <laughs> and sort of lands at the top. Uh, that is your movement, but you guys are are, uh, are next to each other, I would say, at this point. Like, you're sort of floating above the building to get out of it, and you look back down, and Mandrake is sort of, like, standing right next to you. Uh, but that is your movement and that is your action. You you guys are just close to each other. Uh, of your faith. I thought we said no hot feet. <laughs> <laughs> you so, said that. Uh, <laughs> she's gonna get right up where Grim is. Hi dear. Hello. I need you to throw this for me. Hmm. Right at it. Give me give me an attack roll. Um, give, uh, give me your dex and your proficiency and add it to the attack roll. So it's going to be for... Mm, please don't want to add one I'm really close to him. So you <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm telling you right now, it is going to be hard to find this thing in, in, in amidst the buildings. Like, if you, you are welcome... Hard to, uh, hard to find the thing? It, it's a mimic. Well, the and it's terrifying. 13 plus 6. 20. So, 23. <laughs> Add your, what is your AC plus four? My AC plus four. No, your AC oh. because it's half cover because you're above the building. 18. 18 total, and you rolled a 26. 23. Uh, the Mimic goes sailing <laughs> through the air, and as it does, it's <laughs> and like, attaches. He's, he's stronger than I am. Uh, attaches to you, and uh, I will say, uh, makes a bite attack against you. Uh, let me roll an attack. Attack for the mimic cloak. <laughs> Thank you, Mimi. I love flight. you, Mimi. That's my oh, baby. Uh, that, that you, Mimi. Oh, it's actually my baby. Thank you for returning it. Okay, well, you can give me the cloak, even exchange. We're all good. Wow. I just imagine this really this being yelled at each other. <laughs> <laughs> you give me. Good go, Mimi. <laughs> you can keep your coach first. No, you roll this. I'm too invested in the story. You will win. <laughs> 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 it's, it's not bad. Um, okay. Uh, uh, 14 hit your AC. 14 is my... 14 is my AC. 14 hits. 14, yeah. 14 hits. hits. Uh, this thing is going to do... Attacked by your own oh, this. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then add three to it. This thing is going to do ten points of damage as it sinks your teeth into you, and it, you feel like this thing is going. Me, <laughs> me. <laughs> bites into your arm a little bit. Uh, give me a Constitution save as you try to maintain spell concentration. He's at the this. top of the building. Oh. Right, right Maybe. Now, right? You don't have to roll a yeah, lot to make this. Up there. Yeah, that's a ten. It's a ten. Yeah, it's just enough that he maintains concentration on the spell. But this thing is hanging off of your arm, and it's like a scene. No, Mimi, a two. Like you know, yeah. <laughs> we traveled together for so long. Um, I fed you. I fed you. I took care of you. I took care of you. I took. Uh, yeah. Going to get to- uh, I think we're just gonna skip. Are you guys okay? We're skipping right past intermissions. Well, I don't like to go, but. Are you skipping intermission tonight? Well, we already or, did. We already did, yes. Yeah, <laughs> we did long ago. I just got wrapped into it. Uh, yes, go ahead, Nick. Um, how 
far away are they from me? 60 feet. 60 feet? How high is the building? Is it a 60 foot building? Or? No, I would. Yeah, well, it would have to be. It's yeah, about he's there. right there, about 60 feet. Can I see him? You would have to if spend all of your movement and sort of back up, back up, back up, back up. How far back? You use your entire movement speed. 30 feet to back your back against the building across the street. So 30 feet backwards? Yeah. I'll misty step backwards and then shoot a uh, magic missile at second level. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, I believe that's four darts. Yeah. Do it. Which auto hit? Yeah. What is the range for magic missile? 120 feet. No! Oh, my God. <laughs> Trying to Sorry. get that missile. Woo! <laughs> um, I'll just roll damage. Wait, wait, can you cast two spells in a turn? It's a bonus act. Misty steps bonus action. Yeah, but it's action. not a cantrip. It's not a cantrip. Can you not do that? No, you can no. do one spell a turn. Ah, uh, never mind. But oh, you can, you, I told you you could use your movement speed to move all the way back. Yeah, I'll, do, I'll just move backwards then. Roll your damage. What, if, if I'm, if the movement wouldn't be bonus action, would it? It would be bonus action? It's, if you're oh, using your movement, done. that's just your movement, your action would be casting magic missile. Okay, I'll do that. Okay. Uh, so as as you pull Mimi Sorry, off of your arm, uh, you look down as these uh, as these four normally the, this size darts like fly forward, but now they turn into like <laughs> arm sized darts that sort of fly forth from the wizard um, across. Okay, the... so I got a two, a four, a four, and a four, and they're all plus one, so. I'm so sorry, buddy, but you're five. two and three fours. Yes, yeah, yeah. so that would be fourteen. So they're each no, five. That would no, be, that'd be eighteen. It'd be eighteen points of damage as these nice. magic missiles go, and it, it, it hits you in the chest. Uh, give me another sorry, Constitution <laughs> saving throw. You can't kill our nine. Our guests. All he did was make fun of us. Kill our guests. We can, <laughs> we can help them later. Uh, yeah, you are still aloft, but uh, I'm sure you're not feeling. How much health do you have? Because you gave him 15. <laughs> Unless did, we that that did that undo? Huh? Do we get that back? You do not. I'm already down. He's unconscious. Uh, you guys down. Uh, You guys watch as uh, these magic missiles sort of pound into him. Unless you had any healing potions? Did you have any healing potions? Any potions? Uh, you guys watch as, the, as, as he sort of like does this spiral and sort of like falls and falls and falls and falls. And Can I catch him? So yes, I would allow that. Uh, 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 you sort of catch him. <clears throat> He's like, who is this? You like someone who loves you. And you sort of catch him up. <laughs> Shut up, Jack. <laughs> uh, and catch him as he falls to the ground. I don't know if I can hear this. Strength up. Uh, is anybody doing anything to help him to assist with him? Yeah, well, He's I'm assuming the they're taking the cloak. But, oh, I, 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 shoot. I'm not up there yet. I wouldn't. No, he's going to the ground. If he's next to him, I'm taking okay. the cloak and Mimi. You're taking the cloak and Mimi. Uh, is anybody healing? I, I do a medicine. Who are we healing? Oh man. Give me a medicine check. As you, as you stabilize this yeah. poor... Those damn morals. Uh, you, he <clears throat> is stabilized and breathing and, and, and will not be having to make death saving throws as, as he sort of is, is helpless in your arms. Um, like many of us have been at, at one given point or another. Um, I'll be happy to heal him. Do you want to take the cloak back first? Sure, he did. Cloak okay. him in yeah, he has it. Um, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna just disarm him from any kind of weapon. Just kind of quickly give him a pat down and just take any weapons that he has. <laughs> he's not carrying a lot. He's just rapier and a dagger. Rapier and a dagger, but he's got perfect. His... Something to gag him with. So, uh, you're you're gonna gag him? Yeah, just cover his mouth. Just... Shh. I'm gonna hop down. Okay, are you covering his he... mouth or are you gagging him? Because these are two different things. Who who? Cover his mouth. You're holding him. Yeah. You you came over to and do I'm the shifted. medicine check. Yes, I'm I'm gonna cast cure wounds. And you're casting cure wounds. Oh, oh, give I me am a D twenty. Okay. I gotta stop putting these away. You gotta stop putting these away. Nineteen. Uh, yes, uh, you cast uh, cure wounds and you wake up and you you see all these people sort of gathered around you and you realize the jig is up and the the cloak is um, sort of gone and and you sort of sheepishly. Is there a gag? So oh, thank God you saved him. I didn't want to have to pay all that gold to the bar. <laughs> well, we have the cloak, and we don't, I'm sure we don't have much time left. 15 minutes is only allotted, so I see we get back. Two cups. Two cups. Uh, and I'm going to hold on to him. Rope him? Time yeah, him. I'll, I'll tie him up. So you place Zoe after you cure him. Uh, and he sort of plays it down. Uh, you, you feel your hand sort of held behind you. Uh, you do a dex 
uh, check adding your proficiency to see how well you are at tying, tying this poor, helpless bard. Eight. Uh, <laughs> and, and tied. Um, and as you touch the teacups, uh, Jamie is waiting in the room and he's sort of pacing back and forth and he goes, uh, We are cutting it a little bit close, aren't you? Well, we've made it the best time we could, it wasn't quite. You son of a bitch! <laughs> you were supposed to meet up with them and then. But, but somebody take the gag out of his mouth. Yeah. Do you have anything to say for yourself? You said you have to cut We were supposed to have dinner with my mother. <laughs> you and I. <laughs> Dear, you know I'm married. I know you're married, but it was supposed to be a... We'll talk later. <laughs> all right. Yeah, you, y'all, you all have done what I asked you to do. and um, You can go digging through the lost and found, but this is more of a pride thing than anything else. Do you want to keep the cloth? <laughs> Me? Yeah. Yes, of course. Cloak is yours. Thank uh, you for and that. she'll she'll put the cloak on and then she'll like whisper to Mimi and just be like, it was nice knowing you did. <laughs> <laughs> and then she'll like hand over. Uh, Mimi sort of crawls up uh, your shoulder and gives you a big sloppy kiss. Jamie's <laughs> um, uh, uh, like, well, I'm sorry about all of this and, and um, uh, I owe you a favor. I promise I'll make it up to you. They would stop with the lost and found. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if you want to go through the lost and found, you go through the lost and found. Uh, uh, who is going through the lost and found? You get the cloak. Who's ever keeping the cloak gets the cloak. I keep the cloak. You're going to keep the cloak. You're going through the lost and found. Uh, give me a d20 as I pull up the tables that you all have. A four. All right. Uh, the four. Um, hang on. Where's Mandrake's? Oh, okay. Uh, a four. Ha! Uh, you, uh, no, no, no. It's, it's not a bad thing. Okay. It, it's, it's not based on numbers. It's just it a list of finger. finger. <laughs> your, 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 you have four your ring finger is taken from you. Um, <laughs> Never no, um, you... Uh, no, index finger. You um you take a um a, a, a you reach into the box and you pull it out and on it is this beautiful ring. Uh, it's inlaid with this little red ruby on it. And uh, and Jamie goes, oh there you go. Uh, do you want some help identifying it? And he pulls out this big book and he sort of looks through it and all and he goes, um, uh, oh there you go. Uh, this here is the ring of the giant slayer. Uh, and and <laughs> this this here. Uh, <laughs> uh, <coughs> Uh, this here is going to give you a, a, a plus two when you're hitting anything that's bigger than yourself uh, with any sort of weapon. So hold on to that. Uh, who's up next to, to, to draw from there? And you sort of reach in. D20? Yeah. Nat 20. You got a nat 20? Yes, sir. Find it from the side of the table. Oof. <laughs> it's five nat 20s tonight. Yeah, Jesus. God. Um, you know. Tell me something good. I have a list, but I feel like if you roll a nat 20, you gotta give me something real good. Tell me that you love me. Yeah. Tell me. No, he's literally just asking for them to tell him that he loves them. How about the gracious and powerful DM? Um. I'll wrap the swamp of those lying in the manger. Oh, no. This here, uh, this here is, uh, you reach into the bag and you try to pull something out and it gets caught on the rim and it's this, like, long wooden. Uh, dowel, and as you, you, you pull and you reach out, it sort of finally comes out of the chest, and in, in, in it is this um, uh, metal glaive. Nice. Uh, there are seashells spanning the, the the handle of the glaive, and there's a little, um, as you hold the glaive up in the air, there's a tiny arc of electricity. Um, he's like, oh man, where, how did we put this in here? This here is the Stormwind Glaive. Um, you can uh, you can use it to attack. I mean, it's lightweight. Um, however, uh, if you want to, uh, once a day you can channel uh, a lightning bolt out from the glaive and it, 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 as as an action. Uh, but it only works once a day. So you, this is called the Stormwind Glaive. Nice. All right. Thirteen. <laughs> 
uh, <laughs> uh, uh, you reach in uh, uh, to the bag, and as you do, you pull out this beautiful sort of cloak. Uh, <laughs> And as you uh, pull it out, it, it's uh, it's sort of dark in color. And as you put it on, it's like, oh, this is. It's so funny that you rolled this. I was like, oh, this is a cloak of elven kind. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is going to help you be a little bit more sneaky and uh, harder to detect when you're making your way through the woods and things of that nature. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody stole it for us. <laughs> <Texas. laughs> they were kind of jerks anyway. They deserved it. First spell. Oh, <laughs> uh, you're going to go first spell. Yeah. I gotta pull up my spell. Yeah. Uh, what level spell can you cast right now? I can go up to level two. <clears throat> you can go up to level two. Roll so my dice, so I will get to roll the other one. <laughs> um, I don't know. Okay. I did the same. Uh, okay. I got uh, a 16. You got a 16. Oh, that's good. Uh, I have a random list of spells for you. And as soon as this app uh, sort of goes through with all of your multiple spells, I'll, I'll have a. Spell rolled up for you. Uh, in the meantime, everybody has pulled. I think from there, except for you. You're you're a bit in the in the shit house. Um, uh, you are you are led to the circular room, and as you're led to the circular room, Jamie, sort of did everyone pull? Everyone's good. Uh, you have the cloak, uh, which you can. I will give you the stats for. It's a nasty mother of a cloak. Oh oh, I've heard. <laughs> um, you are all led to the room. Um, Thoe, give me a. Perception check as the doors to the room close. Oh, that was good. Uh, 18 plus 5, 23. Uh, it's good that it was good uh, because <laughs> uh, as the doors to that circular room close and you feel <laughs> the and you and you look out, uh, you look past Jamie who sort of waves to you and you look over at your newfound friend who looks very sheepishly at the ground and then sort of brings his eyes up to you. And you have a flashback to when you walked forward and cast Cure Wounds on him. Yeah. And as the doors begin to close, he holds up a pristine gold dragon scale, looks at it, gives you a wink, and the doors shut, and you are back in your house. Uh, he rolled a 19 plus dex for sleight of hand, and it beat your passive perception so that he was awake, and you were close enough to him that he was able to reach into your bag and he take, took that gold dragon scale. And uh, there is a wink as the uh, group's Good first fight. scoundrel uh, sort of makes an appearance. Oh. Uh, you have access to the spell Haste, if you didn't already have it before. Haste. It is a doozy of a spell. Um, and that is tonight's game. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is a major quest item, and we are going to have to resolve that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, we also have to do a giveaway. We have a giveaway to do. Um, uh, thank you so much for everybody that's tuning in. Uh, normally we take an intermission, and I would announce that we, we, we have an intermission and we have stuff going on, but we didn't do that because I was so wrapped up in the story tonight and had so much fun with it. And I, I hope you guys can forgive me, and I, I don't think you're ever going to apologize for more D&D. Um, so, uh, yes, uh, if you haven't already, please uh, type in the word cloak. But only once. Only once. Only once. Don't do it multiple C -L -O -C -Z -Q -R -K, <laughs> cloak. C-L-O-C-Z-Q-R-K, cloak. Z-Y-X-W-V-U-T. You can type that, that, that spelling many times. No. That one. <laughs> yeah, that's it's just five. That one you can type as many times as you want. Three nat 20s in combat, and a cheer 10 to make the total match the number of Indigo's followers. Oh, oh thank you so best. much. Yay. Yay. All right, I'm going to go ahead and roll the giveaway. Let's draw a winner. For Any last minute cloaks, get in there Amazing dice now. donated to us by our sponsor. Five, four, three, two. Let's hope this works. Oh my gosh, look at Hesky! Hesky won! Hesky! Hesky. Hey. Hesky uh, do me a favor, uh, go ahead and send us a DM or a private message with your address and we will get these out to you post haste. Not only that, but we will send you uh, this beautiful, uh, uh, I was going to say, a bard pin uh, to celebrate our special guest star this wow. evening. Uh, so you will always remember the scoundrel in our midst. Uh, so there you go. I'm so glad we have a Han Solo. We really needed a Han Solo. <laughs> uh, and it makes me so happy. Uh, so we have that here. Uh, well, I'm going to include that with and uh, and say thank you so much uh, for supporting everyone that supports the channel and supports us. Uh, we couldn't have hit the number that we hit 
uh, without all of you. Um, so as always, uh, we encourage you to, to go find people that share your nerdy passions, go find people that like playing games and telling stories, and go connect with them. Indigo Connect. We'll see you soon.